I'm in the meeting. Please carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are now starting. Yeah, start. And, and this will be on live directly. Huh? Okay. Jitin, you can make it live to YouTube. Yeah. Okay, sir. Are we live, Jitin? Yeah. Good yes, afternoon, sir. Sam. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Namaskar. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome uh, to all of you uh, to today's webinar, which has been jointly organized by the Foundation for Innovative Packaging and Sustainability and the National Institute for Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises. The subject of the webinar is the importance of packaging for MSME to enhance export market. I'm also very delighted to say that uh, we are graced with this occasion uh, by our chief guest, Dr. A. Venkateshwaralu, and our guest of honor, uh, Mrs. Swarupa Glory. Uh, and uh, following in the coming uh, two hours, you will hear a lot from some of the experts uh, in this field. Uh, it goes without saying, this is the first uh, webinar that is being jointly organized by the two institutions. So it's my pleasure uh, to be the master of ceremonies for the day uh, and to also help sum up uh, sir, the technical session. My name is Shailendra Singh and I'm the Chief Consultant Sustainability uh, for the Foundation for Innovative Packaging uh, and Sustainability. Uh, over the coming uh, two hours, I'm sure this will be a very enriching session and lots, lots to learn uh, from such an eminent uh, list of speakers and panelists. Uh, I don't have to say to the audience, you know, what is the importance of the MSME sector in India? Uh, MSME sector in India is very often also called the backbone of the Indian industry. The potential of this sector is yet to be unlocked. And then when you look at it in the context of packaging and the importance that packaging plays, important role that packaging plays, not only for uh, functional properties, but also for aesthetics. Uh, one can only uh, dream about the possibilities. So with that, I, it is my um, uh, pleasure uh, to invite uh, Professor Dr. N.C. Saha uh, to give us his welcome address. Uh, Professor Dr. N.C. Saha is an internationally acclaimed professional with 33 years of rich experience in the field of packaging, science, and technology. He was the former director of the Indian Institute of Packaging, Government of India, which is India's premier institute in packaging. He has done his master's in food technology, CFTRI, Mysore, and PhD in packaging management, an alumni of School of Packaging, Michigan State University, uh, US, also known for his accomplishments in the field of food packaging with a patent to his credit. Vice President for three years at World Packaging Organization and Secretary General for six years at Asian Packaging Federation. It is with the deep pleasure that I would like to hand over the floor to Dr. Saha for his welcome address. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Shailendra Ji. Uh, very good afternoon, respected chief guest, Dr. U. Vakotashulu the retired IS officer and the former chief secretary, the government of Tripura, our guest of honor, Mrs. S. Glory Sharupa, the director general National Institute for Pro Small and Medium Enterprise, the minister of MSME government of India, Mr. Sandeep Bhatnagar, the director marketing business development of NMIC, NI MSME, Dr. H. S. Yadav, the director Northeast Regional Institute for Science and Technology, Naris, Arunachal Pradesh, the team members of FIPS, the faculty members of the various university, the industry member of MSME, participants, press, media, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me an immense pleasure to warmly welcome our chief guest, Dr. U. Venkata Sholu, the former chief secretary of government of Tripura, and also the mentor of the Foundation of Innovative Packaging and Sustainability during this fourth webinar called Importance of Packaging for MSME, to enhance the export market, which is being jointly organized by our foundation and NIMSME, Government of India. In fact, the foundation is working 
in a very aggressive manner for the last two months to meet the objective under the mentorship of our chief guest. Sir, your continuous suggestion and guidance do always motivate us to fulfill our mission. I also welcome our guest of honor, Mrs. S. Glory Sharupa, the Director General, NIMSME, who has shown a keen interest to jointly organize with us this webinar for the benefit of MSME sector. Ma'am, we are extremely thankful to you for your gracious presence today, and I'm confident that your kind address will definitely motivate the industry under MSME as you have spent more than two decades for the upliftment of MSME sector. I also welcome Mr. Sandeep Bhatnagar, the director of NIMSME, who was our contact point from, from the side of NIMSME. And I feel happy to express our sincere thanks to you for your great effort that till now, I think more than 80 industry participants has already connected. I believe that it was our joint effort to get the participants. You might be aware that in India, there are about 22,000 packaging industry comprising of packaging raw material manufacturer, leading large industry paper in plastic, metal, glass, and large number of converter, ancillary material, and packaging machinery manufacturer. Very interestingly, almost 85% of packaging industry comes under MSME segment. Most of the cases, it is a one-man show who has to take care of production, purchase, finance, management, sales, marketing, and so on. As a result, the MSME sector, sector are always under uh, stress and they have a great challenge to run this business. Especially, they have faced a difficult situation during this recent pandemic due for their financial constraint. Similarly, packaging user industry like food processor, pharmaceutical, cosmetics, and toiletries, handicrafts, automobile spare parts who are the packaging user industries are also in a large quantity. And unfortunately, many of them are not aware about the importance of packaging how to increase the shelf life for a food, small food processor, the packaging specification, the food packaging regulation for the export market. In addition, how really package design helps to sell their goods in a better price. Considering all this necessity, it was felt to organize this webinar to sensitize the MSME sector to make them understand about the importance of this subject for export market. In fact, MSME segment is a large contributor to our export market to on the foreign exchange. As my colleague, Mr. Shalendra, you was talking, they are the backbone for the country's economic growth. Today, packaging is considered to be an integral part of our daily life. There are a number of packaging material like paper, paper board, plastic films, laminates, skin container, glass container, composite container, plastic container, all are used for a different packaging application of different types of consumer goods like food, pharma, cosmetics, automobile, and so on, and most of them comes under MSME segment. When we consider the consumption of packaging material, there are about 70% consumption of packaging material are mainly for food products, including beverages, in, followed by 15% pharmaceutical, 5% cosmetics and toiletries, and balance up for other products. This indicates that packaging plays a very important role to enhance the shelf life of food product and also for the business of any commodity. In addition, the packaging also provides the containment, protection, preservation, presentation, communication, advertising, branding, and sales promotion. I'm sure the participants will be highly delighted by the four presentation, what will have the technical session and all the eminent experts will be talking on the different such way to cover how really the MSME segment would be benefited. Now with this, uh, before I close it, I'll just request um, our uh, uh, Mr. Jitin, can you show some of the slides? I just want to introduce about our foundation, which was started. This is the foundation called Foundation for Innovative Packaging and Sustainability with our theme called Knowledge Platform, Idea to Solution. Next slide. This foundation was uh, formally launched on 20th of January, 2021 at the hands of Professor M.M. M. Sharma, the Padma Vibhushan awardee, and the distinguished Emeritus Professor of Eminence, former director of ICT, which was earlier UDCT in Mumbai. And in the August presence of our two mentors, Sirajan Iranjan Rashmi, the former Chief Secretary of Manipur, and mm -hmm. Dr. Yu Venkata Sholu, former Chief Secretary of Tripura, who are the present as a guest of honor. Next. Uh, this foundation, we are the three director, 
along with me there are two director dr ak ghosh who is the professor in the material science and engineering at iit delhi and mr mk banerji who was the director innovation of sl propact next we have a two mentors as already mentioned dr u venkatesh sholu uh, the former chief secretary of government of tripura and mr r r rashmi the former chief secretary of manipur we also have at national level three board of advisor dr lakshmi raghupati who was the former director of ministry of forest environment and climate change and professor pradyumna vyas the former director of national institute of design nid and dr anil wali the managing director of FITT at IIT Delhi. We have two international level of advisor, Mr. Safiullah Chaudhary from Bangladesh, who was the past president of Asian Packaging Federation, and Mr. Dharma Tilak Ratnayake from Sri Lanka, who was the past president of Asian Packaging Federation and presently the advisor of Packaging Development Center at Sri Lanka. Next, we also have a three thought leaders, Mr. Abhijit Chaudhary, who is from US. Mr. Tamil Maniyan Nagalingam, who is also in the West to Wealth business, is the own company. He is our thought leader from Chennai. And Mr. Deepak Mehta, who is from Baroda, is dealing with the recycling machinery from Libom uh, Incorporation. Next, and we have four chief consultant, and they are actually in the core committee along with these three directors. And uh, Mr. Rahul Bhargav, uh, who looks after the innovation in the foundation. Rahul has got more than 30 years, and he is the first batch of alumni of IIP, Indian Institute of Packaging. He is an expert in uh, packaging science and technology. Mr. Shailendra Singh is an expert in sustainability. Spent more than 30 years in the corporate segment. Mr. Shubhash Bhattacharjee, who was the former managing director of Neramec, the Ministry of Donor Government of India, and presently he is with us as a chief consultant of training. And Mr. Deepak Manchanda, having almost 40 years experience in packaging. Working in the various corporate segment, and now he is with us as a chief consultant of packaging design. Next, next. So with this, uh, I I once again welcome our chief guest, Dr. Yu Venkata Shrulu, our guest of honor, the Madam S. Glory Sharopa, and all other dignitaries for your kind presence in this uh, webinar, which is a very important segment, which is a very important topic, mainly for the benefit of the MSME segment, and I am sure that. The deliberations which will happen, the four technical session will be highly useful for the, all the industry for the growth and of the business. Thank you so much. Thank you once again. Jai Hind. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Saha, for that. And it's my pleasure now uh, to invite Professor Dr. Anup K. Ghosh uh, to delve a little bit deeper into the activities of our foundation. Uh, Professor Ghosh is a distinguished. and renowned professor in the field of polymer science and engineering at the indian institute of technology delhi and also a fellow of the national academy of sciences india uh, he has over 30 years of research and teaching experience and has 12 patents to his credit known for his accomplishments in the field of polymer processing and rheology significantly contributed in the areas of reactive processing of polymer blends and alloys 3D printing of polymers and polymer packaging and microcellular processing of polymeric materials. He obtained his M.Tech degree in uh, M.Tech degree in chemical engineering from IIT Kanpur and Ph.D. in chemical engineering from the State of University of New York at Buffalo, New York, USA. He worked as a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Pittsburgh, U.S. till 1990, and then joined the Indian Institute of Technology. Delhi in 1991 he is a recipient of the teaching excellence award by iit delhi in 2015 2016 uh, my pleasure uh, dr ghosh please uh, uh, over to you sir thank you thank you shailendra ji uh, for the introduction and uh, i i would like to take up uh, to discuss uh, with the, our foundation activities uh my regards to dr venkatesh sharalu uh, the chief guest of the program and our mentor for the foundation very happy to have you with us sir and also uh, mrs uh, sarupa uh, who is the director general of the national institute of micro small and medium enterprises and mr sandeep bhatnagar 
uh, director marketing of the same institute. Uh, we are very thankful uh, for the opportunity that you have given to us for our endeavor to take it forward for our foundation, especially in the knowledge platform. And this is one more attempt that we, we, we are taking for number of programs that we have uh, under our umbrella uh, of the foundation on the knowledge platform and, and, and the uh, education and the training program. Uh, in order to uh, bring about the activities that we are taking under the umbrella of the foundation, we have divided into four quadrants, as you can see that. And these are the key areas where the foundation has already started moving on with the number of activities and we like to uh, take a uh, few more steps in this direction. Uh, one is the skill development program, very important for us, which is on the knowledge platform. The other one is the research and innovation. We like to have a significant step forward in this direction, uh, project and entrepreneurship, as well as the publication and policy advocacy. Next, Jitin. So under the skill development program, as you can see that we have number of collaborative training and education program. Today's uh, program is also in, in that direction and that provides the knowledge platform for the industry and the community together. And these will also bring awareness program, bringing industry in the direction of environment. And this will lead to upgradation of the skill and knowledge especially for the women and youth of the different communities. This is some of the areas uh, that we like to emphasize on. And uh, some of the programs are uh, very soon will take over in this and which will be fulfilling the mission of Skill India uh, to make us self-reliant. In the, in the area of research and innovation, uh, we, will, we will be taking up number of collaborative research on the solution in the packaging area, research and development activities with the new generation materials and sustainability. And we also would like to collaborate in supporting industry with innovative uh, uh, packaging uh, technologies and, and the center of excellences uh, development and the package design services and solution. In the area of project and entrepreneurship, uh, we will be emphasizing uh, on the translational R&D uh, where actually we can, we, we aspire to take lots of research from the laboratory level, which is there in many universities and the R&D organization for the commercialization. And that will lead to industrial projects on packaging of products, environments, et cetera. And also we like to involve ourselves along with the startup companies in order to support them and for their incubation in different areas of packaging development, design and uh, sustainability. The other portfolio is also very important where we'll be working on the publication and the policy advocacy, which, which will go through organizing various research conferences and workshop. Uh, we are doing it on online basis and, and we hope to see uh, the better uh, possibilities that we'll have a physical presence, uh, a conference and workshop or in hybrid mode. We also like to take up a number of programs uh, for the, the framework development for the circular economy, for the regulatory compliance, product stewardship, packaging design and quality improvement support, and which will finally can take on uh, the policy support and the advocacy program. Next slide. So all together, as Professor Shah was mentioning uh, in, in, in his first slide that, you know, the, the mission of the foundation is on the knowledge platform. And we call that as a kite module. Under this, we are taking knowledge platform, information package, and training and education program. Uh, we like to have knowledge platform on various areas, including packaging concept, classification, materials, function, recyclability, life cycle analysis, circular economy, sustainability. In the similar way, in, in, in terms of materials, technology, packaging, testing method, regulatory method, we will be developing information package which will be beneficial for industry, various organization and the community altogether. And we are already involved in training and education program, starting from basic training program, elementary training program, advanced training program. We also can take up this in-house training program and the entrepreneurship training program. And we already have collaboration with the six institutes. We have uh, the Nectar, the Northeast Center for Technology Application and Reach. We have collaboration with Mahatma Gandhi University of Kottayam and Kerala. 
We have Northeast Regional Institute of Science and Technology, NEDIST. Uh, today, we are having the program with the National Institute uh, NIMSME. Uh, this is one of the examples that kind of under the collaboration, the uh, kind of uh, the educational program we, we are uh, taking on the knowledge platform. Also, uh, we have collaboration with the uh, uh, MOUs with the uh, Foundation for Innovation and Technology Transfer FITT of IIT Delhi, which is very much involved in lots of startup incubation and technology transfer uh, possibilities and the policy making. And we have the University of Science and Technology, USTM Meghalaya. We already had uh, uh, the through webinar the educational program. Uh, uh, jointly organized uh, by uh, in the month of February, 15th of February, we had program with them. And as a part of the knowledge platform in collaboration with PhD Chamber of Commerce, New Delhi, we also had a program with innovative packaging and en environment uh, in the month of February. So we, we already completed uh, two programs. This is our third program. We are very happy to have this platform uh, to be shared with uh, all the participants and delegates who are, are, are involved in this program. Next slide, please, Jitin. So I'd like to thank you. Please go ahead, Jitin. You can see all our information about the foundation, various activities uh, that you can have through our website with www.f-ips.org. And I'm showing you some of the, the website, which, which you can see that you click on and you'll be getting all the information. And thank you all for your kind attention today. Thank you, uh, Professor Ghosh, for that very uh, succinct but detailed uh, overview of the FIPS activity. With that, it is my pleasure now uh, and privilege now to invite uh, Mrs. Swarupa, Director General of NIMSME, uh, to give us her address as the guest of honor. Uh, uh, Mrs. Swarupa is a professional in the field of entrepreneurship and skill development with over 22 years of experience. She's an alumni of the National Institute of Technology, Warangal, worked with the union ministries, namely Coffee Board, Ministry of Commerce and Industries, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Ministry of HRD, Ministry of Agricultural and Farmers Welfare. Uh, she has been uh, now with, of course, heading uh, the NM, uh, uh, NIMSME uh, uh, institution. Her core areas of expertise are around policy advocacy, program designing, international programs, research, training, teaching, skill development, agricultural and rural uh, development sectors. She was honored with the excellence in education in the seventh oh. Principals and Teachers Award of 2018. A member of the Ministerial Task Force Committee for Futuristic Initiatives, Innovation and Startup Policy Formulation Committee of NIT Raipur. It's my deep privilege uh, to invite you, Mrs. Swarupa, to please address us all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Shailendra. Uh, namaskar. Uh, today's chief guest, Dr. U. Vakateshwarlu and um, uh, Dr. Saha, uh, founding member of this uh, Foundation for Innovative Packaging and Sustainability, uh, the directors of this foundation, and other esteemed members of uh, this uh, foundation and uh, uh, participating members of this uh, today's webinar. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you and greetings from National Institute for Micro Small Medium Enterprises. Hyderabad, Ministry of MSME, Government of India. Um, I'm very happy uh, we are coming together, uh, Foundation for Innovative Packaging and NIMSME organizing this uh, webinar. And uh, some time ago, we signed an MOU uh, to work uh, for the enterprising activities in uh, uh, packaging uh, sector. Uh, and it's uh, my privilege to be part of this uh, webinar and uh, I thank the foundation uh, for giving me an opportunity uh, to share some of the thoughts and uh, to be part of this uh, webinar today. Um, actually, in packaging, uh, we don't have much expertise, but we are pioneers in entrepreneurship development. And um, as we all know, MSME sector, it is uh, very important uh, for our uh, national growth and for our Indian economy. And the sector contributes 45% uh, of the industrial output 
and uh, for the exports export promotion it is contributing over 40% and it is providing employment to 60 million uh, people and uh, most importantly it is uh, creating the job almost year on year 1.3 million uh, youth and women are getting employment in the sector and uh, the sector is coming uh, producing you know 8000 different quality products i think your packaging product also plays very important uh, uh, you know segment it contributing important segment i believe so 8000 quality products uh, the uh, sector is bringing out for the domestic consumption as well as the international markets uh, the sector is producing and uh, the gdp contribution uh, towards gdp is it is almost you know 30% uh, and um, uh, and every year people are becoming eligible uh, to place uh, their uh, uh, you know job roles in the industry but whereas uh, industry there are no opportunities but it is the responsibility of the institutions like uh, uh, nimsmi or the you know uh, private agencies like your foundation uh, to take care of this issue and uh, women uh, entrepreneurs contribute almost 10% uh, that is a uh, uh, among the existing uh, MSMEs, so women contribution is only to 10% and that um, they contribute to only micro enterprise sector and we cannot find a major, uh, sorry, a small and uh, medium sector, the, uh, their uh, uh, establishment is uh, very, very low. Um, as announced by our Honorable Prime Minister, uh, India will reach, you know, this 5 trillion economy by 2025. Um, the Honorable Union Minister for MSME, Sri Nitin Gadkari ji, has made a promise that three trillion would be contributed by MSME sector. It is very ambitious and um, it is, uh, you know, very tall target uh, for the sector and for our institution also. So, how to reach this target? See, like uh, you know, when more and more uh, uh, aspirants, more and more startups, and more and more, uh, you know, technical technology oriented or science oriented graduates, uh, they take up the enterprising activity. So then, um, uh, you know, this ambition or this target will be achieved. Uh, last year, we all know because of uh, the pandemic, uh, the lockdown, and this uh, spread of the virus. So MSMEs were very badly impacted. Uh, there was a lot of disruptions, especially with, uh, uh, you know, finances. Many people have shut down or their activities have come down and they were in the verge of closure and service sector is very badly impacted. Uh, and most of the micro enterprises, they are looking for, you know, a diversification or they wanted to change the line of activity. Uh, this is how the sector is going on. And um, of course, packaging is a very uh, one interesting as well as important uh, uh, sector as well uh, also a product. Uh, to me, always it is very interesting uh, because uh, wherever I open, uh, you know, something when we receive from Amazon or even the food from Zomato, I'm so much, uh, you know, like um, uh, sometimes surprised and sometimes amazed the kind of, you know, packaging it is made whether it is, um, you know, glass or, you know, plastic or, uh, you know, uh, including the, you know, your diamond. So the kind of packaging is made, uh, a flower pot. So these days uh, it is becoming more popular instead of, you know, uh, sharing the sweets or sharing the flower bouquet. So people are exchanging the flower pots and the flower pot intact without a single uh, soil grain uh, falling this side, that side, you know. So intact, it is packed and it is, you know, sent uh, across the country as a you know um, gesture of greetings i'm really you know so much uh, uh, pleased to see these kind of developments and very recently uh, like uh, when i purchased some jewelry so they have packed and gave and when i have opened it uh, i'm so happy to see that you know a light glows and your jewelry sparkles uh, I was really so happy, like, uh, you know, it, it always happens, uh, you know, for a woman when they purchase jewelry, they are so happy. On top of that, it is sparkled and it is packed in such a way. So uh, this way, you know, many things are there. Apart from this, I don't know much about packaging, but so we always uh, love to work with all the sectors. MSME is beyond the sectors, whether you take agriculture, you know, horticulture, uh, rural development, uh, marketing, uh, branding or you know glass industry leather industry paper you name any sector so we are there and uh, 
Now, after agriculture, MSME plays very important role, and we have been built the we have been very much instrumental in building the capacity of the officers and the learned community of our nation. Uh, we have completed. Um, uh, almost you know 20000 training programs since our inception for the past 60 years uh, we have uh, i can proudly say more than half million officers we could uh, train in entrepreneurship related uh, aspects there are learned people but this orientation we could give them even the uh, ies officers economic service and uh, the revenue service officers one module they were with us to know about the sector about the schemes about the policies and uh, even in international arena also, uh, we could uh, train 10,000 executives representing 143 nations uh, related to the good practices and the best technologies and the lessons we learned and the experience we gained in India uh, to share with the developing nations and who, to help them out. The, all these uh, international programs are being sponsored by our Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India. And I'm also happy to share that in the skill development uh, uh, side also, for the past one decade, uh, the ministry is being formed in the year 2014. But this institution has started its own exercise and homework in the year 2009. And we started the skill development programs. And so far, we have uh, trained more than 1 lakh educated unemployed youth and women in um, uh, various skill development, uh, uh, various skills. Uh, various trades, hands-on hands -on skill, uh, like women-oriented skills and um, technology-oriented uh, skills and uh, IT and IT-enabled services. Even now, we are continuing with these programs. So we are basically helping government of India as a technical arm uh, in capacity building. And we are doing a lot of research, consultancy, and uh, we are helping um, various ministries uh, with uh, our services like a consultancy and uh, we have completed almost thousand studies and um, uh, we have uh, uh, you know jointly uh, ventured with uh, this foundation uh, with a uh, great ambition again uh, to reach this sector uh, in the packaging sector earlier we had uh, conducted a couple of programs with uh, you know packaging institution uh, some workshops also we have done but um, when uh, our chief guest uh, has approached us because our chief guest has you know good rapport with our institution that's how we have done uh, many uh, entrepreneurship development programs uh, sponsored by ministry of food processing industries also uh, so we have joined the hands with this foundation so that we can take up more enterprising activities in packaging sector and the skill development uh, programs also because uh, packaging is uh, very important that too after uh, uh, this pandemic, it is becoming more and more, it is gaining more potential and there is huge demand and uh, awareness is being created. Now uh, people are uh, so cautious and they want a particular type of material to be packed for a particular drug or uh, for a solution or to be a chemical to be used uh, and especially for uh, food, uh, food products. So whether it is solid, liquid, or any kind of food, so how it has to be handled, and the packaging plays very, very important role, yes. and it is very important. And um, most of the um, uh, enterprises, micro enterprises, they want to change their line of activity. But uh, when a foundation like this, who are pioneers in packaging, when the eminent uh, and experienced uh, you know, cream are in this. Uh, foundation and institutions like us, um, NIMSMI, we come together so we can create opportunity for them to venture into this industry, this sector. Now, that is what I feel because uh, um, as we know, in most of the food processing sector, the packaging is taken care by women workforce. Uh, but they were never given opportunity to start a manufacturing uh, enterprise. Uh, re reasons we know, some reasons we don't know, but there are statistics. Uh, so that, you know, even uh, these kind of programs can create uh, awareness and we can provide opportunities so that even women can take up uh, micro enterprising activity or a group of women can come together and start, uh, you know, uh, a small you know, venture business in this sector. So that is what uh, um, my hope and my wish and um, uh, uh, we are the national institution and we are serving the MSME sector for the past 60 years and uh, uh, our uh, motto is objective is to reach maximum uh, entrepreneurs to stand on their own under Atmanirbhar. So we have the mandate to reduce the imports and increase the exports. 
So we are in that mission and we have several centers and uh, center of excellence in our institution, uh, like Udyam registration from 31st March uh, onwards, uh, after 31st March, it is Udyam registration. It is no more previous Udyog Aadhaar memorandum. So we are creating the awareness. Uh, the entrepreneurs in this platform, they can approach us to how to get a registration under this uh, Udyam portal. Uh, we can help you out with the GST also. Uh, we have a GST cell here and we have experts in our center. Uh, we can help you with GST registrations, your filings, your returns, all that we can do for you. And uh, we have an entrepreneurship development uh, cell in our institute uh, for your idea generation and consolidation of your idea networking to get the financial assistance from a financial institution, mentoring, handholding, and for various other you know, support services, we can help you out. We have an incubation center and uh, we have uh, a small missionaries with us and we have provided the space to entrepreneur to come and uh, work with us and you know the, to, to do their production and market it we are helping so any of you are interested you can approach us likewise we have several services uh, in our institution and uh, most importantly we have intellectual property facilitation center in our institute established by government of india yeah, so whoever wants to get a patent a trademark, a um, uh, copyright, or your geographical indication, uh, anything. So you can approach us. We will help you out to protect your property and uh, to get the subsidy offered by government of India. So whatever the centers we have, cells we have, whatever the services we are offering. So most of the things we are giving on subsidy and a few are paid uh, for the officers. And uh, you can always visit our website, www.nimsme.org and take maximum benefit advantage of uh, the, the government of India services and our uh, services also, our experiences and expertise. Hello. And, uh, we want to see more and more uh, namaste. Entrepreneurs uh, online take up this, uh, uh, entrepreneurship as their career uh, in packaging sector and uh, provide employment opportunities for uh, the unemployed youth and women who are looking for opportunities uh, and uh, the joblessness is increasing and we wanted to uh, you know contribute uh, for the entrepreneurship growth and the promotion and ultimately contribute for the economic uh, 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 economic development of our nation and see that our rating in the international or global index you know improves uh, once again i thank dr saha and entire team from foundation and our special thanks to uh, dr u venkateshwar lusar uh, you know, for giving NIMS me an opportunity to collaborate with this uh, innovation foundation and uh, thanks to everybody and uh, I wish all the best for this webinar, webinar. and I also uh, see, uh, I, I also want to see uh, the participants from this uh, webinar to approach us and to get uh, to succeed in their business and ventures. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks for your very inspiring speech. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that, ma'am. I think clearly you have, uh, we are very impressed with the body of work that has been already uh, achieved by our institution, but more excited by the potential that exists. And thank you so much uh, for, uh, for your inspiring speech. Uh, with that, it's my pleasure now and privilege uh, to invite uh, Dr. U. Venkateshwar, who our chief guest for the occasion, uh, to give us his address. Uh, Dr. Venkateshwarlu is a senior IS officer of 1986 batch, Tripura Manipur Keda, with the decades of experience in general administration, planning and statistics. He served in many senior positions in different industries, including that of Ministry of Food Processing Industry. And she has initiated various modern methods to improve fish productivity and eradicated fish disease implemented schemes related to rural development for upliftment of poor uh, and people below the poverty line. He has implemented various model agricultural university act in the government of Andhra Pradesh, setting up of an agricultural college in Tripura and a college of veterinary science uh, also in Tripura. He also implemented the Vaidyanathan package to revitalize cooperative sector and banks in the state of Tripura, which eventually turned into the scheduled bank called Tripura State Cooperative Bank. Indeed, sir, we are honored uh, to have you here and we look forward 
uh, to your address. Over to you, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yeah. Good afternoon to all of you. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity at the outset. I must compliment as well as thank both Dr. Saha and also Madam Swarupa, who had readily agreed to get into this foundation as a partner, collaborative agency. And in fact, I have had the you know, opportunity or occasion to be associated with NIMSME for the last 20 years. In fact, uh, predecessors of uh, Madam were also my friends. I, whenever I used to come to Hyderabad, I used to stay there. So therefore I know about the institution very much, their potential, their capability. Therefore I had uh, requested Saha that uh, it would be good thing for, you know, to go forward in the packaging sector, particularly the entrepreneurship. Now Madam's institution, irrespective of the trainings, they have been doing all trainings on the entrepreneurship, but never entrepreneur is taught to best of my knowledge, that packaging is important. In fact, it should start as a capsule from now onwards, at least. Every entrepreneur must have the packaging as a concept first. Unless he makes packaging attractive, his product cannot be sold. It cannot be taken to the markets. Having said that, now let me get into the details of packaging. Say packaging, no doubt, is important, not only for safety, but also for attractiveness. But more than that, the packaging material should keep the material inside so safe, so eatable or you know, uh, perishable product, so that you know one eats without any damage to the product itself, while it also takes care of the products. Now, I will give you one or two examples like uh, traditional, how it has been going on ever since I joined service, even before I joined service in 86. So for example, you take a product called, you know, a process called fish packaging, right? Fish packaging from, from Andhra, West Godavari, East Godavari districts, all the way it travels to Northeast, Tripura, even to the Bangladesh. What they do? They do a packaging fish with rice husk and ice. And it stands for more than seven, eight days of transport itself. Thereafter, it is sold for next three, four days, not only in Tripura, but also in Bangladesh. So I don't know, they had no scientific knowledge, but it happened. It, it has been happening even now also, still continues. That is number one. Other thing, what we in India famously do, you know, what happens, we always export raw products. In fact, we forget about the value addition. I give you one example, like citrus family, there is a fruit in Tripura. That fruit is abundantly grown in wild. It is exported to Bangladesh, rather Bangladesh people, they take, they process it and send it to London because it is a sort of delicacy in some non-veg preparations. Similarly, there are many products like you take iron ore, it goes, we don't convert it. So the valuation is very important in the days to come. Now, if you want to become more of, you know, non-dependable on the imports, you have to do better exports by converting our own raw materials into different products, which one can eat or one can use. And here packaging certainly plays important role, particularly the packaging MSME sector, Madam has already said, glory Madam, that in this pandemic, the person or the organization, the entrepreneur who had suffered most must be MSME sector because the MSME sector cannot absorb the shock of pandemic, particularly financially. A big company like, you know, big companies, I will not name, why should we name? So they can absorb the shocks, but MSME entrepreneurs, they cannot absorb the shock. In fact, I'm sure that most of the MSME entrepreneurs would never have spent their time on the packaging side. Rather, I would request from now onwards through our foundation, the FIPS and also Madam, there are other institutions which can be reached in Hyderabad locally also, which I will mention subsequently that packaging must form, like there are trainings which happen in NIMSME, it, you know, sponsored by Government of India, MEA, the all African institutions, African countries, people come here. In fact, they have done one, one or two courses for IAS officers also entrepreneurship. So in all these courses, entrepreneur has to be successful means packaging is very important. It plays without his knowledge, it plays. Therefore, a few hours must be taken forward so that, you know, it helps the entrepreneur to think before he makes a product, what should his product look like in a packaging, how we can sell. 
what should be the design of the packaging and design as madam said see when you receive a packet it should call you hello please open me please open me so that is the invitation the packaging gives you to because of its attraction because packaging is done well even if not only the attraction but the safety inside also is taken care of by them very well so now there are few institutions in hyderabad like where one can focus before naming those institutions i would also like to say or communicate to tell the participants as well as to our institution uh, particularly fips that we should concentrate on five to six sectors say these are the sectors which will be everlasting of importance as the generations pass by these sectors will have its importance like pharma pharma is the sector which is always there going to be there as long as we live pharma will be there similarly agriculture in agriculture we have fruits and vegetables we have perishables we have leafy vegetables in fact there are leafy vegetables like you know curry leaves even the moringa from kerala it is exported to dubai and all from bihar bendi goes to dubai and all right from northeast uh, the spice jet have started express spice jet express it is called they take the fruits and vegetables to hong kong market in fact we have taken some pineapple fruits to dubai all the way from tripura it went to the bombay then bombay to you know uh, dubai by ship similarly animal husbandry products meat meat products again we don't do much of the value addition value addition is really required here also again packaging plays an important because it has to protect the you know uh, the safety not only safety eatability how do you consume after 10 days 15 days of opening the uh, you know package similarly in the fisheries side you have prawns and shrimps and handicrafts handicrafts you know particularly west bengal northeast they have very good quality of handicrafts which can be sold in london markets these are all made by small entrepreneurs from tripura as i know personally also i know similarly you have handlooms you know handlooms you come you know there is a sari called you know dhaka sarees is very famous so it has lot of importance in even foreign countries particularly amongst bengalis right and more than that these are the days of sustainable packaging whatever we do it should not cause loss to the environment whatever packaging material if it is thrown it should absorb into the soil it should perish in the soil that is very important therefore our shailendra singh is there perhaps to help the foundation further in this direction then mostly i also see sometimes you know cosmetics cosmetics come in a glass bottle particularly ladies you know we buy for 500 700 800 it's a glass lakme makes i don't know why the lakme makes in glasses glass bottle suppose it falls it is gone 600 gone bottle is gone rather if they put it in a small you know sort of uh, plastic which is you know it will last long plus it will also help us you know otherwise you lose the money so similarly the packaging is another actually in india what happens packaging starts only after harvest of the produce in fact it should not start after harvest in fact it should start before harvest itself while the mango on this tree itself the packaging cover should you know some sort of net should be there which is followed in some countries like you know alfonso is such a costly fruit we simply pluck and put it dump then we pack so thereby it loses its lust and you know that attractiveness therefore packaging must start in case of perishable products while it's on tree itself carefully you should take it out then only you can pack it properly right there are so many sectors which madam has mentioned dr saha have mentioned there is enough uh, scope for working on this particularly in packaging for improving the export potential and now coming to the export potential export potential cannot be improved unless you have proper safe packaging packaging not only should take care of the safety of the product as well as the durability for a long 10 days 15 days it has to take care of as far as the domestic packaging is concerned is not much you know a issue in the sense it will take 5 days 7 days at best when you go to international particularly international exports there you have to play the packaging while working on a packaging you have to play the codex formalities also of the product unless the product satisfies in terms of residues the codex formalities the product cannot be taken even whatever best packaging you have so entrepreneur has to take care of the codex formalities while packaging is so important outwardly to look attractive inwardly that is in the product the codex residues as per codex standards the residues have to be bare minimum otherwise they will not accept your product 
so therefore codex formalities needs to be kept in mind but really for small you know entrepreneurs it will be very difficult therefore madam has offered us lot of you know scope particularly they have lot of cells uh, gst cell they have for registration they have intellectual property cell they have so so many you know uh, openings or outings are there for an young entrepreneur a startup man to come and incubate his idea there because the incubator is also available there and lot of expertise they have and hyderabad being a place where you know you have lot of scope particularly this is called mini agricultural capital of india in fact you have more than 20 agricultural institutions here right and you have a nid national institute of rural development in fact i suggest to the foundation and its core members that when they sit every friday they should think on seven or six sectors and also the institutions of importance where which matters to the economy see we need not work on a core auto parts which is really not required for us they don't require your foundation also for you know tata he doesn't require us right so we need to work with the sectors like you know agriculture pharma mini pharma right in fact tech mahindra makes the all the design here local in hyderabad the designs are made for ireland company which i am you know aware of so therefore there is a lot of scope for even design in the packaging here and agriculture they have almost half dozen institutions here and there is a one institution called manage extension they teach lot of courses for the agriculture graduates employees officers who come in fact none of the trainings in fact i myself being agriculture graduate in my last 35 years wherever i have been nobody talks of packaging in fact first time i discovered packaging when i was joint secretary food processing then i thought it is the most important thing in fact all of us have packaged ourselves very well in fact dr saha you see he has come up with a tie and you know like gosh has come up with this is called packaging there is nothing but they would have come normal like our ancestors no so therefore packaging is important not only here everywhere in the life packaging you were you make hot sambar you have to put in a vessel that is a packaging temporary packaging so therefore there cannot be any life for any one of us without packaging in the last even you go to the grave you require a packaging right without packaging you cannot be sent to the grave all right so with this i mean thank you for giving me this opportunity and in fact i will also put dr saha and the foundation members to the local manage here i will talk to the director there and also nird director is an is officer i will also talk to him in every course of one week of important natural uh, national institutions we should have at least 2 3 hours on packaging whatever worth it will have i am sure it will have a worth because there cannot be any training for anybody without packaging because unless you know if if you don't give me a proper pack they are no actually this packaging is not good i cannot carry simple thing we say so packaging is the most important thing in the life for day to day and preservation of a product preservation of life itself so therefore packaging packaging plays lot of important role and in fact i can mention those all those products not necessary for the time being all the experts are there because i am a generalist i should not talk more than what i can really say so with this i thank all the members professors and also madam in fact i must thank glory sarupa madam having agreed to enter you know at that point of time when i made a request to her she also would not have thought that what is it how important is it now i think i am happy that she has understood so much she spoke so well i must tell i must really compliment her she spoke very well and uh, thanks madam thank you for your uh, whatever session and also your active support for the foundation and dr saha i know him very well and also other speakers particularly bhattacharya and benerji also they are all very sincere and committed and i must compliment the team for the simple reason that in this pandemic also you are making efforts meeting every you know saturday or friday i think to take forward the dialogue and as far as the participants are concerned it's a entrepreneurship is a product is a package packaged you know sort of concept any entrepreneur can go to particularly nimsame they guide you for everything except packaging from now onwards they will also guide you for packaging so this is what i thought and please don't hesitate and the government of india presently in particular about the atmanirbhar that is we should become more of you know exporting society rather than importing society that is you know, atmanirbhar or global for local whatever all that you know stuff so therefore lastly before i conclude the india is a not one economy india is a multiple economy country right that is hyderabad economy is different than calcutta economy that is like you know we have different cultures different languages different economies we have in fact though we as a country we are one economy but individually each of the state has its own economy in other words this is the country lives in 
like you know different centuries also like you go to andamans they are in zero century like in hyderabad and mumbai you are in 21st century same thing in the packaging also in village areas packaging is zero in urban areas packaging is more than 100% so therefore i request the foundation to work more on primary sectors that is agriculture pharma pharma is not a primary sector packaging i am saying only for packaging side and particularly animal husbandry fisheries then all uh, rural development in fact lot of rural development entrepreneurs are there they don't know they think after making the product the package rather we should inculcate through our foundation with help of nard potential help which i will work out right so that the packaging concept is generally taken to the rural areas and nard institutions and also agriculture institutions agriculture institutions if you can work through agriculture institutions manager there are more than 10 institutions here so we can work through that also with this i compliment dr saha and all the participants also for uh, taking time and attending this webinar thank you very much namaskar thank you sir thank you i think sir our foundation is so much thankful to you for your uh, initiative other we could not have get the madam with us and we are so thankful to you that madam has accepted and uh, and i msme being at uh, the government of india the organization just because you have told her and now i am sure today's speech madam has told how you yeah, in the packaging and i am yeah. sure sir in all this entrepreneurship program with your guidance i think the packaging will become a one of the component and as you rightly said that any entrepreneur any business if it does not know packaging he does not know whether the food pharma how the product will go to the market yeah. so that becomes the package the container becomes the so important thank you so much sir thank you to you for your guidance thank you sir over to shalendra yeah. with that uh, let me uh, invite now uh, mr sandeep bhatnagar uh, director marketing and business development uh, nm is uh, me nimsme nimsme yeah that's easier way to pronounce yes nimsme 19 uh, sandeep comes with 19 plus years of cross functional experience in technology driven sales marketing and business development activities across a wide spectrum of sectors uh, technology consumer good real estate biopharmaceuticals education and business consulting at key stakeholder positions he's been director vice president country manager in leading mncs government institutions and projects he has scaled up operations of japanese british german indian businesses in asia pacific region by building efficient teams of sales both online and offline brand management and marketing e-commerce retail public relations investor relations and business partnerships and tie-ups mr sandeep bhatnagar would you like to propose a vote of thanks please yes it's my privilege and a pleasure to offer the vote of thanks and especially a great thanks to uh, uh, dr uh, venkatesh rulu sir your guidance is indeed uh, very valuable for us and you know before as you rightly told that uh, for entrepreneurs the basics should start from packaging itself and uh, sir we have been also told like in marketing there are four p's and p one of the p's is packaging so without p you know whether we are in the age of e-commerce or whether it was a traditional marketing still packaging is very critical so i think uh, the initiative and the sir uh, the the uh, the points and the sectors you have highlighted is very much relevant to us and uh, especially the example of fish packaging you have told is uh, is one of an i would say and i was eye opener for me I, i i was not aware that you know that so much of potential is there so we look forward for such initiatives with the uh, fips and uh, we will definitely look into these five six sectors so you have highlighted especially pharma agri uh meat products sir handicrafts handloom cosmetics and even the design of uh, you know the packaging is one of the uh, important areas we will be focusing on in our uh, joint training programs which will be now organizing with you know fips uh, i am also thankful to uh, our madam uh, mrs s glory swarupa ma'am who in spite of so busy schedule since morning ma'am you know she had back to back meetings she has um, made it sure that she is she she is she is part of the you know this program and her valuable tips like uh, is always very useful for us she highlighted that you know msmes in itself you know are uh, producing 8000 quality goods and with an ambition with a target which have been given to us like 5 trillion economy for you know for 
uh, development, MSME, the, our institute has a great role to play. So our partnership with FIPS and also, uh, as ma'am highlighted, we have, you know, the cells, especially the Udyam registration, GST registration, EDP cell incubation center and IF, IF, uh, IPFC is all our gates are open for all the participants here. You can log on to our website and see further details. And uh, I'm also thankful to uh, uh, Professor Dr. A.K. Ghosh, the director for FIPS, whose uh, you know, four areas which you have highlighted, sir, are very much relevant for us. You are, the areas which you highlighted, especially the skill development programs, which we are also you know, very much. So I, I see a lot of synergies between both the institutions in all the four areas. Uh, skill development program, research and innovation, projects and entrepreneurship, publication and policy. So all these areas we are part Amazing. and will be, we would like to partner with you in various initiatives we take. And last but not, not the least, uh, Professor Dr. N.C. Saha, who were instrumental uh, for making this happen. And it is all because uh, his efforts, I would say, who have been you know, working with me day and night to ensure that we reach the maximum number of MSMEs to come onto this platform. And then further we will initiate, continue to initiate such activities with them. Thank you, Professor Sir. And thanks to entire team of FIPS and also backend team of NIM SME who were instrumental in mobilizing the participants and making this webinar happen. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Sandeep, for that uh, vote of thanks. Um, let me now uh, invite uh, Professor Dr. N.C. Saha uh, to take over as the session chairman uh, of uh, the uh, discussion and presentations on the subject of the day. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Saha, over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Shalendra ji. Uh, it's a great pleasure to, for, uh, for me to... Uh, to chair this session. Uh, in this technical session, there will be, in fact, the four presentation. Uh, the first session, which will be taken by uh, Mr. Shubhash Bhattacharji, who is the chief consultant of our foundation. Uh, Mr. Shubhash Bhattacharji, I think, is very well known. Uh, I always say that he is the connector to the Northeast, who was the former managing director of the Neramec Limited, the Ministry of Donier, the Government of India, and having 38 years of experience in marketing of processed food. And uh, he's, he's basically an agricultural graduate and masters in food technology from CFTRI as an alumni. He's my, the same college we have been passed out and uh, specialized in uh, IIM Kolkata, IIT Delhi. And um, uh, he's a consultant to the CSR, CFTRI and in many board and in many government. And especially he's very much connected to almost all the association related to the entrepreneurship are based in Northeast uh, region. So I always say that uh, Mr. Bhattacharji is connected to the seven sisters and one brother in the Northeastern part of our India. Uh, Mr. Bhattacharji with his rich experience on the food processing and marketing, uh, he would be covering the subject of importance of packaging for the export market. Over to Mr. Bhattacharji. Good afternoon, Dr. Saha. Good afternoon, Venkata Sarulu, sir, Madam Director, and Madam DG, Mr. Vatnagar, and my uh, colleagues from FIPS. Uh, I should be given a chance to give a presentation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can kindly, kindly, kindly give me the skin sharing. Uh... Jitin, you can give him. Given. Okay. Is it visible, Dr. Saha? Not yet, not yet. Yeah, start. Yeah, it's come. It has come? Yeah, it has come. Okay. Well, uh, very good afternoon to everybody. I have been given a topic of importance of packaging for export market. Well, uh, uh, in the platform of NI MSME, mm -hmm. and of course, FIPS is there. Uh, just, uh, I'll just put it in uh, two, three phases. First is MSME, how it comes forward. And then, since there is a separately a session on pharmaceuticals, so I'll put on agriculture and other activities, and then taking forward the linkage, how the importance comes up. MSME, all of us have heard, it plays a crucial role in providing large-scale production and employment at a very low, lower level cost. But this commands a high presence in domestic as well as export market. Domestic, all of us know, MSME is basically ruling it. In export market also, we'll see in the next, next slides how well they're functioning. 
coming to the packaging part for which we are in the in this platform today packaging facilities marketing and our chief guest and even our guest of honor madam has also told that it significantly plays an important role in the marketing mix we all know that good packaging results in creating personal relationship i think madam has very clearly spelled out that and in other words it's the silent uh, silent salesman all of us know that the physiological effect of good packaging is such that the consumer customer feels that the producer thinks about him i mean that that sort of feeling transpires when the good packaging happens and his her convenience is a concern of the producer so that way the chemical reaction start and whatever chemistry happens happens there only at the first love at first sight as we say no similar the case packaging gives us the highest uh, mileage and that way it becomes so important for both domestic market and even for export coming to the msme sector what we are talking about uh, well uh, the territory body is one of the platform we are sitting as ni msme we have kvic all of us know coir board nsic and of course mgri so all these together the msme sector is a wow wow situation nowadays with the new government they are really vibrating we have number of schemes many of the schemes are already in the msme sector playing even they have created some website for that mobile app have been created to policy support give give support on this and uh, overall if you see, if you see the cagr cagr if you see 2019 to 20 it has grown in msme sector to the extent of 18.5% so that way msme sector is really creating a big uh, thrust and our whole market is governed by them only <clears throat> if you see of course this is not the latest uh, slide but then what you see that in the export part 14 15 data what i have seen it is almost approximately 45% of the export market is also equally handled by msmes and these are the various msme sectors covered incidentally food and beverage of course it is around 7 to 8 percent 7 point something coming to the aspect of talking where uh, the subject we are discussing in this particular session here the market aspects of packaging uh, once we think of the market aspect yeah, of packaging basically yeah, profitability comes this is the first thing yeah, uh, really break us. and if we go to the marketing oh, aspect we should know what packaging is it uh, by yeah, definition uh, of course uh, yeah, 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 our chief guest already told to told you two three told us all of two three times that packaging is to contain protect he was talking about the safety part yes contain protect preserve a product as well as aid in its handling and final presentation it refers to the process of design evaluation and of course the production of packages and then going to market so market expert basically covers on profitability then consistency the quality of the packaging has to be consistent and this will reflect the company reputation and once the product has a consistent and um, good look and all that the consumer expectation comes forward and of course the convenience of convenience is a must in case you really were thinking to uh, dent in the market the purpose of packaging basically for marketing we can highlight at seriatum shelf life as a food technologist we all know that to maintain the organoleptic properties over a long period we need a very very good packaging proper packaging to different profile of the food products similar case comes for preservation prevent temperature fluctuation bacterial ingress dust blah 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 so all those of things basically the simple technology of preservation by preservation by processing has to also extended to the packaging part then comes the barrier protection uh, prevent migration of oxygen water vapor uv light etc then physical protection obviously protection from any sort of shock vibration compression on its transport mobility and all that the prevent uh, pilferage and or tampering and also for assuring authenticity authenticity is a must suppose my brand x comes to the market and it is found to be spill over and it has got been abandoned and all that it doesn't give a proper security to the inside product so that has to also be properly handled then comes uh, this portion control single serving packaging how do you do it if it is single serving product then you should not go with multiple bundling so uh, some more things if you add on the more important things come is information transmission and this is something which has got very very good requirement for both domestic and also export packages and level communicate how to use transport recycle dispose of the package or product some types of informations are required by governments and some basically for the consumers and as on date these are also uh, these are few things which are mandatory one need to do it and if they want their product to be in the uh, desk uh, next point is this uh, already our chief guest uh, sir is already told about as per 
codex elementary commission traceability part that is already one of the purpose for a good packaging has to have in case you have to have a consistent market then come the convenience part uh, all of us know that yes consumers consumers are the king and if we really want to give a uh, proper convenience to the king we have to adopt a good packaging see that the convenience product comes with proper distribution proper handling then it got a good display so that i or anybody or your you yourself go into the department store or others and choose it and take it for use so these are basic purpose of packaging and and if that is done yes we are one two three step ahead to get the marketing on so uh, some of this properties of a good package what we understood in the last two slides is that properties are the withstanding temperature variance non toxic water vapor resistant barrier to transpiration ease in handling printing and temperature resistant all these together are the properties of a good package and if we can come out of this situation properly we have made at least 40 out of 100 then comes up rest activities which we need to do it very good number uh, how do we do that so for that matter you need to know the market you are plowing in in case you are suppose as a msme man you cannot put a marketing director at the very beginning he makes and make a study with like operation research group they make a market study and then come up with a solution you can't afford that in msme sector to start with basically what you have to understand the market you are trying to plow in then you should know your competitors suppose i am making a particular brand of juice or any other product i should know who are the other groups they are making that i remember one of this my my earlier period when i was with the ministry of food processing industries modern food industries as general manager in delhi uh, bread you know is like newspaper early morning is required and then the, we had that time uh, harvest gold the most competitor with us so we had to ensure modern bread and harvest gold how do you do so the know the competitor well then comes the technology part whether the delta technology part is with you like we had some good proposition to ensure that the public demands are met and also that the middle class and lower lower family people can get the supplement of nutrition so like the technology part we should ensure and the marketing tools we are adopting so all these are the basic requirements to make a determination in the i am bringing up success obviously the business and the environment has to be understood otherwise you cannot really step in and stay stay for long then comes the strategy part once you know that yes you can make it so 40 plus another 10 or 15 you got in here so you are about to reach a first class position must add on something so what do you need to do is that you should for any 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 specific product you want to make you have to strategize yourself how do we go for it whether you go for niche marketing or you go for database marketing cluster specific marketing suppose you are thinking of say our chief guest sir was talking about pineapple cluster or the he was talking about also the fish culture like there some clusters if for specifically marketing then that particular cluster what they want how do they in bulk or retail how they go forward so all this together gives you the strategies to be uh, made and then adapt properly then kerala marketing and relationship marketing is something which you need to do at every step may it be a very minuscule product or may it be a any msme product you are stepping in now so now coming to the demand for export in case we go to the topic is for export marketing the sectoral demand what i could notice now uh, fresh fruits and vegetables preferably organic then spices and condiments again preferably organic in fact just uh, an hour back i was uh, with uh, indian chamber of commerce talking on this uh, this particular thing of spices spices organic spices and there was a business uh, bsm matlab bias color meat also for that we had number of people uh, there are guys from hong kong there are guys from dubai there are guys from bangladesh so we had lot of interactions just now similar the case we should for the export purpose we have lot of demands on those sectors then processed food yes to some extent poultry then textile pharmaceuticals and cosmetic and personal care products so what we know that packaging and marketing are mutually exclusive things you know they are commonly as uh, uh, i think uh, so sandeep ji was talking about four p's and all that fine one more thing what we understand is that there are the two sides of a coin in the it has to go together simultaneous so packaging is very important to make a dent in the competitive market for each of these sectors and needs appropriate attention i don't say proper attention appropriate attention because every profile of your product needs a little difference in the marketing status this is the global organic food scenario and opportunities the huge opportunities is there this is the data of 2019 i have taken it from apedas uh, this traceability data guys what i find is in packaged food category we have market share uh, to the extent around 40 20 15 15 and 
So India probably is competing for this 15 to 20 uh, percent share, and with China minus, I think we can in increase that fold to many fold. Uh, this is the organic products export situation 2018-19 onwards up to up to 18-19. You can see the growth how it is happening. So this gives uh, my MSME friends who are attending this program. This uh, basically you can really think of organic producers for a good market. The possible products for those, you can think fruit and vegetable, meat products, poultry products, dairy products, confectionery, honey, any any products you can make, so long there is a continuity of the product line, number one, and number two, you have a market and you are maintaining a consistency in the quality and, of course, the packaging. So keeping that in mind, I, have, I, I also want to add over one interesting thing here. Just from 2003, 2004 onwards in India, you have seen there is some demand for geographical indication and that registration has become for agriculture sector, which I am talking here, uh, and food products. Around 130 agriculture and uh, food products uh, registered uh, GI is there. And out of this, incidentally, 18 of them are from the northeastern states. And we have a lot, lot of demand from northeastern organic and GI products together. Otherwise, GI products has got um, export market possibilities. There are GI products available, Arunachal Orange, Kirby Anglong Ginger, Tejpur Lychee, then Assam Orthodox Tea, then Boka Saul, Johar Rice, Kanji Nemu is the Assam Lemon, we say, Chokhua Rice, Memang Narang is the Citrus, Sarah was talking about Hatkora from Tripura, uh, Memang Narang is also one more Citrus from Meghalaya, then Khasi Mandarin from Meghalaya, Chakhao is the Black Rice, Kachai Lemon is another Citrus from Manipur, similarly we have Mizo Chili, the Bursai Chili, Naga Tree Tomato, Naga Mircha or the King Chilies, Sikkim Lush Cardamom, Dale Kursani is a very spicy product is also one of the chili. And off late, the Tripura Queen Pineapple, Sarah was chief secretary there. The Tripura Queen Pineapple also we have done. G. Incidentally, out of these 18 GIs, I proudly share that 13 of this has gone through my hand. I mean, all documentation have been done by me. This is just on the side track I'm just talking. Fine, then this once GI and organic tech together, probably the export market is in a win-win situation. So who are the people who can support the MSMEs or other groups in organization support you want? You want uh, for uh, from the organic uh, side, if you see, or for agriculture or processed product side, APEDA is there. APEDA headquarters in Delhi, having their branches in Hyderabad, Guwahati, Kolkata, Mumbai, and Bangalore. Like that, financial support they give, development infrastructure, then quality development, market development. Then comes AMPEDA. AMPEDA gives Marine Product Export Development Authority. They are based in Kochi, having their sub branches around. Then uh, you know Dr. Saha, his uh, premier organization, IIP. Headquartered in Mumbai, having branches in Delhi, Kolkata. They all this organization gives support in um, uh, in the export market, and uh, the packaging part is something which will boost that in a very bigger way. Uh, now, now uh, what I think I think this particular discussion already our uh, uh, ex CSR has told, told that is uh, every stage of processing you need a packaging. It's the integrated part for collection aggregation you need a packaging. Suppose you are collecting from a source and aggregating in a place, you cannot throw it and just store it just like that. So packaging is a must. Then we are transporting the vehicle, those products for agriculture producers from collection aggregation. You again need a packaging. Even even you put it in a warehouse, pack house or packaging centers. This is something which is, so it is an omnipresence, you know. Similarly, when you make it, the cold chain movements and all that, there also you need it. So packaging, stacking and other paraphernalia, packaging is a must. So what do we understand that? For every stage of the value chain from harvest, Till the end, it comes to the consumer. It comes in packaging. And that is the significance, the importance, which really makes us think that, yes, agriculture, horticulture, or any other product line that we, we uh, packaging is a, something very much important. So once packaging is there, so there is a need of marketing. The marketing, you need, you need packaging part. Without that, you cannot really make any dent. Excuse me. Laptops, uh, power was giving uh, this thing. So what happened, you know, this uh, packaging and marketing is something, uh, marketing will give you answering safe delivery of products. And uh, of course, the packaging part has to be there. These are packaging of fruits and vegetables in different sectors is being done. Even for export, this is used like that. This is the package design done for pineapple, by, done by IIP for the Northeast. And it has got prevalence well for domestic and export market. So what we understand is that this packaging, whatever we discussed for agriculture, horticulture, commodities, yes, 
but the future trend is something which one should know when you go for export you know packaging market is one of the most competitive fast moving consumer group areas and major companies continuously battle as i told you in the very beginning we have to become a sweet tooth consumer from competing brands so otherwise the consumers will not be taking it forward so the developing trends in packaging has widespread and increasing of the cold sales laminated structures and all that that of course they have separately been discussed in the other session the export packaging some important requirements the shipping company will not be responsible for poor packing so you have to have a very good packaging and sure safe and easy transport of that insurance has to be done packaging capable of withstanding hazards and handling hooks handles grippers must be provided if it is a the particular uh, commodity you are cooking and, and taking it forward then position should be clearly indicated side up glass with care fragile these are all simple things but then very critical when you think of uh, packing and marketing are going for export the most important consideration thus becomes safety convenience and environmental impact is creating out of the packaging you are serving and friends so when you make packaging is a branding is something you have to have otherwise your packaging doesn't um, uh, really gets a value so basically packaging provokes branding and what is that branding comes uh, here here of course uh, we have taken brands of different product including some of the northeast products one one such products you must be seeing everywhere uh, when you open facebook or youtube or anything the zigira group of uh, company then the value chain marketing branding these are also again northeast product i have put the brands of only northeast products so what happened you know brand basically all of us know that is the name term symbol whatever you say a design of combinations and that will give you proper identity of your product line and take it forward then identify the producers which product line he is selling then strategy has to be an indication how to concern to use that brand and it becomes an integral part in any sort of marketing strategy you make the international branding depends on many factors of course that has to be elaborately discussed in a section otherwise basically international level products how the product it is the product protocol of that particular country has to be taken into consideration so these are basically very minutely you have to address and these are the points i have just shared with all of you and uh, just to close here see how beautiful i am i am showing you marketing bag in box this is pineapple juice concentrate bag in box aseptically packed and here the northeast pineapple branded by our honorable president so what do more you want you need a good packaging that international standard and you need a brand uh, um, uh, instead of getting a bollywood man we have our honorable president to brand our product so basically what these with these few words i want to share with you that yes the importance of packaging is a must both for domestic and export we are talking for export yes it can really make a big hit thank you friends and i wish some interactions uh, coming time thank you very much thank you thank you mr vatachar ji i think within a very short time you have covered and um, so many aspects on the packaging given the importance how it could be you have been talking about the personal relationship which we say in interaction packaging you also say that msme how almost 45% the export market contribution what they are doing and that is true packaging is always say the need based technology more importantly you say that what are the marketing mantra that one the msme segment he should not really appoint a marketing manager rather he should think that what the competitor brand what the competitor's product what is the marketing chain and of course the geographical indicator the gi indicator and what are the products really one has to attempt into that i believe in overall it was given a glimpse about a very much um, um you know inspiration to the msm segment who are actually really thinking about the export of the fruits and vegetables and that was a very good session thank you so much mr bhattacharji i'll now you, switch on yeah i'll just switch on to our next speaker uh, i think um, i need not say much about him and he is very well known in this education fraternity dr anup ghosh who has already been um, already been introduced in the driver report uh, that in the inaugural session he is a professor is a very senior most professor in the polymer science now in the material science and engineering he is a fellow of national academy of science he is a member of research advisory committee of the government of uh, department of science and technology government of india member of governing council of cpe dcpc government of india and so on as a many more feeder but i can say only the three word how i can introduce him I always believe he is a great academician. He is a great person, and more importantly, he is a great partner in our foundation. I thank you so much, Professor Ghosh, and over to you for your presentation. What he is going to cover about 
innovative packaging material for the food packaging application. Over to Professor Ghosh. Thank you, thank you, Professor Shah. It's it's our foundation, and it's really really a, a platform of knowledge. And I'm really also excited uh, with uh, with our uh, uh, chief guest, Dr. Venkata Sharalu, the way he brought the importance of packaging, and especially for a institute. Uh, where uh, these medium, small, and uh, entrepreneurs, they are all uh, should come out and the importance of the packaging uh, that they need. Uh, let me let me share my screen. Uh, if 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 I. Uh, uh, You're allowed to. Yeah. Can I? Can you see that? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Just make full screen. Just make full screen. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not being able to see that. One ne minute. Niche, niche. Go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so keeping that in background, and uh, you know, the Ms. Bhattacharya also has given uh, such a nice background and the requirement of the packaging. So uh, it is actually the platform on which I would like to make my uh, talk today and my contribution is actually it's made it ready by also uh, uh, Madam Swarupa, which, uh, our, our uh, guest of honor, uh, she also really put it the need for the packaging. I'm really, really amazed. Uh, so what I want to bring it to uh, the participants here today uh, on the material aspect, the packaging is so important. We have to package everything. And, and there are so much of opportunities, then what are the different materials? What are the aspects of the materials that we should look into it? So uh, in that regard, I thought that I will cover different material aspects so that the participants have an idea that from where we have started and where we can, uh, where we are going for this kind of uh, innovative material development in the packaging applications. And obviously, we need to cover many areas. I'm, I'm covering mainly on the food packaging application. But as uh, our chief guest said, that the agriculture, pharma, uh, and many other areas are so very important. And we are really focusing on those also in our activities as a part of the platform. So what I'd like to bring in uh, today, if you, if you look at that, I put together some of the picture that you can see that this from these earthen pots, to the um, different different materials that have been used for packaging and the advancements that are that are that are happening, and 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 uh, you can see that uh, it's made of earthen pots, it's made of metals, it from different packaging material like papers and and also the polymer and plastics that have been used very very largely and because of a lot of advantages in this area. And in a very brief way, I will try to cover some of them and also the advancement that is that is happening. But before I start, I could not move or I cannot move without showing this picture because I'm also from Bengal. And if I Bengal, if you see, we have to pack our special sweets, rasgulla. Then I still I like to look at it on the left hand side, as you can see on the Arden pots. This is one of the best way we like to have our sweets. Okay. And vis-a-vis, -vis, if you look at it in comparison, that it is now being packed in plastic. It is also be available as a, a packed in uh, uh, tin uh, material. And then they also have a different, different advantages, different, different shelf life, uh, and, and the value addition that, 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 that are happening. happening. And then the traditionally, that what we like to have, and all the materials, what they have to fulfill, there are lots of requirements because the shelf life doesn't, doesn't come only from the material. These are then pot also has a lots of porosity. And these are the materials through which you have the oxygen transfer, uh, the moisture transfer, the shelf life increment, uh, the protection of the food that we use uh, that we uh, like to have and that is, that is already there. So if we, if we like to go ahead uh, with the different classes of materials, uh, then we will see the conventional materials generally uh, consist of metals, glass, paper, and plastics. And it can be ranging from flexible, semi-rigid, and rigid. And you can see the number of applications we are aware of day-to-day -day life. 
everything, whether we are using cardboard type, we are using plastic type, we have a carton type, we have a metallic and the glass, so many applications and some of them are traditionally packed in that way. And there are, there are if, you, if you look at it, that among them, the paper and the rigid, uh, rigid and flexible plastic packaging material covers almost two third of the packaging uh, uh, packages uh, that are being used for the different uh, packaging of the products and the material part of it. And then the glass, uh, and other metals and other beverage cans that constitutes the other part of the packaging aspects. However, as we move on, we'll also have to look into the advances that are happening, happening in the packaging materials because we now like to move it as an edible packaging. We also look for the smart packaging. We are looking for antimicrobial packaging. We are looking for water-soluble packaging, self-pulling, self-heating packaging. Uh, we need a special micro packaging, uh, also the flavor and odor absorber. So we have to bring in all these functionalities uh, within the material so that our packaging is doing the purpose that it is needed for. Okay, so starting with the metals, which was traditionally uh, the most available or uh, packaging earlier that has to be used because it has a uh, very high strength and rigidity. It can basically block the gas and the moisture. It has a pressure resilient, temperature resilient. Uh, obviously, we should have a corrosion resistance and that is done by special coating. It can be sterilized very easily. Also, it can be uh, decorated and level as for the branding purposes that can be done. And uh, various met metals are uh, being used and steel and aluminum being a very common one. Uh, uh, obviously, there are tin and other, mat other material, mild steel also can be used but these are the mostly used for the cans, containers, caps, and closers uh, for, for very good reasons. And they can be recycled. They have a ductility and formability, and they can be used for uh, heat treatment and uh, hermetic sealing and other mechanical strength, as it can also be used for the aluminum for its gas barrier, malleability, and formality purposes. Also, we have to look into the, uh, the weight of the material because it's being a metal. Uh, uh, aluminum is still lighter material and which can be recycled. So, so this concept uh, are being used and can be used for a large number of mater materials. And then if you see, the paper is another form of the packaging material, which is used since 17th century. And uh, it used uh, uh, for mainly for the dry food, or fatty pores in forms of the corrugated boxes. It can also be used for the uh, folding cartons. It can be used in the form of tubes, sacks, and, and cups and bags. And uh, it has some of the properties or functionalities. Uh, it tears effortlessly along the fibers for specially used for the opening purposes. Folding is much more easier. And, and this uh, along the fiber directions, it has a durability and stiffness uh, that we need for the packaging of the food products and for the transportation of the same. And we have seen many of these uh, packaging material, uh, uh, as everybody was mentioning, that when you are online ordering food or online ordering many other uh, products, they are, they are also available uh, in this kind of cartons and boxes. Okay, glass is another very important packaging material, still in vogue, still in use for many, many purposes. And, and it, is, uh, it is used for the, sorry, it is used for the time of the Romanians uh, when, when it has been invented and it has a very high inertness. It can be sterilized very easily. It has excellent barrier to moisture and gas. Imperviousness is there, temper resistance. It is microwavable and it has a pressure impervious. However, that it has one of the problem is, is of the is fracture property of the breakage. As our chief guest was mentioning, that if we are having uh, the content and very most valuable content, very precious content within the glass, which is one of the one of the deserved packaging material. Although, but but then we have to be very very careful. And uh, it is not only the breakage and loss of the product; it is the safety also involved, uh, which can create a create a problem for us. The another material which is making very high dent now in the packaging industry, almost forty percent uh, of all plastic manufacture is now being used in the packaging industry. It is widely used for bottles, bowls, pots, trays, foils, cups, bags, etc. You can see that 
big, uh, and you can see some of them and they are very lightweight. So if you, if you look at it and compare the plastic vis-a-vis uh, the other metals and other materials that I have shown, they are at least one seventh to one tenth uh, are lighter uh, uh, material uh, in the respect because of its density. It can be molded into unlimited shapes. It has a, a very high chemical resistance and it can be used as a rigid containers as well as a flexible uh, films, okay? Processing is much more easier. It has impact resistance. So even if it falls and most of the thing, if you, if you look at it today, honey is being, uh, 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 is being packed in the plastic bottle. Many other uh, products, uh, the oil, everything has been uh, packed in the plastic bottle. And uh, even if it falls, uh, it, it is actually impact safe. It can be decorated and level as you want, and it is obviously heat sellable, which is there. Uh, there are a number of plastic materials that, that are being used. Polyethylene, polypropylene is extensively used, as I said, that because of the lightweight, strain, stability, processability. And polypropylene has a special mechanical properties and, and also the heat resistance because it can go at relatively higher temperature, and many of the food products are now being used in the polypropylene tubs for this purpose. The other end, it is polyethylene terephthalate, the PET material that we know that uh, all of our soft drinks and other materials that are used in the pet bottles. And it is a resistance to heat, oil, solvents, and acids. And having good ductility and strength, it has the advantages uh, of impermeability to the gas, and it has a transparency. And it can be uh, developed in any forms which can be, uh, which can be done. So in the series of the plastics, there are a major number of plastics. We can mention polyethylene, polypropylene, PVC, polystyrene, nylon. These are the names uh, which are being used uh, mainly uh, for the packaging products, which, which you can see all around. Some of the pictures, you, you have seen that. But most recently, what we look at it, and I'll be covering in uh, some of my uh, uh, presentation uh, following this, is uh, some of the new materials, plastics has come, which has come from the bio-based material and, and, and becoming uh, more and more important uh, in terms of the sustainability requirement nowadays. Uh, those are about polylactic acid, which is, uh, which is coming from the bio-based materials and the cellophane and cellulose type of plastics, uh, wh which are being used. Uh, generally, what you see, uh, you, this plastic materials looks like this, the granules, and you can form into any kind of a shape you like to have. I purposefully wrote uh, some of the structures here to make you understand that uh, it, is, it is very good for any of the MSME sector and some of the packaging material development very easily can be developed uh, any kind of form, but you, you actually convert material from uh, the original raw material to a particular product and by the process actually you control the structure within itself in such a way that you can make it rigid or flexible. If I control this middle structure, uh, uh, then it will be either rigid or uh, I can make it flexible based on the control of the processing temperature, processing operation and all that. So if we look at the characteristics that, are, that we can give from any materials that I have shown you that for food packaging, it actually first you need the strength. It, it is in terms of the tensile strength, which gives you the strength. It also needs the bursting strength that how much you can pour into this packaging material. It can need, need the tearing and the puncture resistance so that you know it can resist and protect the food from uh, the, uh, the puncturing or something may happen during the transportation and storage. Obviously, I talked about the impact strength which is needed. And the two other thing is the shelf life and the permissibility uh, that which, which, we can, uh, which we can control. And this control can be done in every material, but we have to be very, very innovative so that we, we can give the food packaging functions like physical structure, artistic presentation, which have been talked about today, even uh, at the beginning of the program, uh, so that we can sell uh, very easily. We can have a branding, we can have a easy recognition. Uh, we can have some measurements for the serving, different serving size. We can extend shelf life. I'll show you that, that we can modify this material or take this material and then we can enhance shelf life and, and then, how do we do that by through physical, chemical, and biological protection? These, these materials are such that they can be of convenience of use and transportation. It can have nutritional and educational information, which is very, very important today. 
without knowing what is the, it uh, doesn't only give the information of the packaging material, it actually gives the information for the product within, which, which it is actually uh, carrying, which is safely carrying and reaching us uh, to us. It, we can have a sensory experience in that so that we understand how is the material inside without even opening the packages. And most importantly, we have to look into the environmental consideration that where these, uh, these packages are going uh, uh, so that we can reduce the solid waste. If we can make it degradable, uh, it is better. I know uh, we are all getting a lot of, lot of food, a lot of other material by uh, through digital marketing. Uh, it is coming our home and sometimes you will see the number of double or triple packaging that has been used. Okay, so when we make advances in packaging system, uh, there are a lot of requirements and based on the requirements, especially to increase the shelf life of fresh fruit, vegetables, agricultural product, uh, uh, packaging and all that, we need a modified atmosphere packaging. We call it what we need, active packaging. We can call that smart, intelligent packaging and biodegradable packaging. And each one deserves that the materials that we have mentioned uh, can be given a new shape, can be modified, uh, can be tailored in such a way. And obviously it has to be cost effective and very easily processable so that it is available to us. When we say uh, modified atmospheric packaging means when we have a product inside, we like to supply that with a required amount of oxygen. We may remove the un unrequired amount of carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide or the water vapor from there. So we have to have a packaging which have a permeable film, which, which you can see that. And this allows uh, this uh, transportation of these uh, through air, this oxygen, CO2 and a H2 in such a way that it actually maintains the fresh produce in this. And that, uh, uh, that happens in terms of the gas composition, permeability, and the product characteristics that is, that is generally required. The many of the materials that I have mentioned, okay, 90% of the packaging materials in pressurable packaging are now using uh, these modified atmospheric packaging materials. And, and they provide the required uh, properties. And I've already mentioned many of these materials uh, which, which are being used. And you can see that uh, even for the agricultural products like the, some of the fruits and all that, where the not natural shelf life uh, can be increased by two to three times if we are using uh, this type of uh, packaging material uh, with the special applications. And this all has been reported, uh, had been tried and tested and uh, scientifically and that they are, they are being used. And these also can be used for our, our food product. And as our chief guest was saying, that we can develop some of them for our uh, packaging of fish and the delivery or transportation of fish and increasing the shelf life for that purpose also. We started thinking. In terms of active packaging, if you can see that, that so what, what we do, uh, we can add some of the additives into that so that they can have uh, properties like antimicrobial properties. So here you can see the fruits like peaches has been uh, packed in, uh, in active packaging system. And this packaging tray and the products, uh, packaging product has been made by based on the polyesters. But when making it, that we have adding some what is called the entry bike mac microbial additives have been added into that. So as I have shown you that you can take the raw materials, we can have the additives, we can form into this packaging product. And then if we keep our produce, our fruit, our vegetable into that, and then we, we increase the shelf life and we also increase the quality of our product, the fruits and vegetables and agriculture product without uh, having the antimicrobial effect and, and the shelf life will definitely be increased, uh, keeping the other functional properties as we have already mentioned. Okay, there are also there are number of smart packagings which are which are being used, and we call them as a intelligent packaging. So these also are are being produced very easily, and then you can see that that they have some of the uh, sensors uh, uh, which which has been added into that, and from their color we can see that that either they are still crispy or the firm or juicy. Or in fact, this can be also changed into whether, whether it's a ripen enough or it has been already the spoilage sensors can be added into that system. And it is the same materials which, I, which I've shown you, which can be added with these sensors. 
and for the better control of the both the quality and safety of the fresh produce uh, which uh, which can be uh, reaching the customer uh, from the retailers and in, in the marketing so what are the new materials which are coming in the food packaging as i was selling uh, these are the materials like you know polylactic acid pla type of material this material does not come from the synthetic uh, resource it comes from corn uh, uh, one of the or one of our vegetable corn uh, the bio product from which uh, these packages are being made which looks like it is like a uh, either polystyrene or polyester and or or polyolefin type of things so they are being used for packaging of various products and after that because they are biodegradable they they can be biodegraded or compost in a particular condition very easily or very recently now we are moving with what is called a cellulosic films okay and there that also uh, can be used for uh, for making uh, the packages for bakery confectionery even for bottle overlap and all that uh, which can be easily degraded and composted now another area which which is making a, a, a lot of uh, a lot of interesting development in the polymeric material is with the nano composites i must uh, a little bit focus on that these these are the areas where you can have improved packaging bio based packaging active packaging and smart packaging all that that i i was trying to tell so what we have here you have all this packaging material they have given a, a very different functional properties by adding what you can see on the right hand side the, this nano fillers are being added once we add them then you can see that that they distribute within the material in a particular form and they give all these specialized properties and extended shelf life by this manner because it it gives a whatever is called as a enhanced barrier properties because it does allow the movement of the gases in a particular way which is called a very tortuous path they have to follow and you can see that that oxygen transfer rate in polyethylene and polypropylene uh, with the use of this only 3% nano materials has reduced by 57% or 20% which you can do that it has been tried also with a polyethylene and nylon system which is a very common system for packaging food packaging material and then when you when you add a nano uh, materials into it you not only reduce uh, or or improve on the barrier properties you can also uh, also helps in saving film weight because you have to use a less amount of material for this purpose okay uh, then uh, obviously you can have a fully biodegradable materials so when you when you develop fully biodegradable materials which are very good and very much required for the agricultural product uh, there you can use starch cellulose protein chitosan polycaprolactin polylactic acid i just mentioned and all these materials are very easily available they are maybe slightly expensive than other traditional material but we can modify them in such a way that they are easily bio uh, compostable and and degradable as you can see they start from corn material you convert it into a, a plastic material and then you make a packaging material and it's a kind of a uh, the cycle that it follows and it, it it dissociates into water and carbon dioxide and is being composted so it's a bio based material goes back into the soil in a different way so the sustainability problem uh, can be looked into very uh, very different way i already mentioned that there are also there are that there, there there are now uh, the tubes are available which are also being uh, 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 change into with this very special barrier properties and where you can have a multi layer uh, packaging converted into single layer where the avoidance of the uh, metal foil which is being used this is one of the very important work which has been done uh, by a, a sl propac where mr banerjee should have been here and given this talk uh, and I, i i i got this from him unfortunately he could not be present in this program today and they have a very good collaboration with south korea to develop a special innovative binder layer uh, packaging material i'll just show you whether we, you can see that or not and i know the professor shah as a chair will do that uh, these are the packaging material which are in the tube uh, for nolen gourd which has been used and developed and uh, i think as a chair professor shah will mention about it with a very special shelf life so you can see that 
where the special packaging of nolan gourd with a very highly uh, shelf life properties has been developed and uh, have been patented and have been put already in the market uh, there are some these are some of the natural there can be some natural packaging material also you can have tree bark uh, for wine branding so you, you can, we can use that way we can have a hay product uh, hay which has been used as a, to make the egg carton you can have a mushroom to make it in a foam product which can also take it as a packaging material uh, edible packaging is one of the very important thing where the proteins and other materials are being used so that actually we are having we can you can have either uh, the packages being eaten or packages being merged into as a fruit product and the coconut shell so you can see that there are so many options available in the form of msme uh, that you can also go into this our natural product india is abundant with natural product and we can develop so many packages but we have to maintain those functional properties that i am mentioning so we can combine materials we can use other materials also very quickly i'll give you in two three slides uh, there are these are called wood based cellulose fibers so instead of synthetic fibers we can have cellulose fibers we can have a paper foam so you can you can see it's a lot of foam material that has been used a lot of foam material is used because it has a thermal insulation you see when you go to fish market you will see the fish is inside these foam boxes along with the lots of ice because of this ice will not melt and fish can stay for long time uh, in his very fresh condition and and any market needs 8 to 10 hours at least uh, uh, after transportation i will say lot of natural products are also used in developing papers uh, which which are now used which are biodegradable and are being used as a packaging material uh, there can be bio foam material because polystyrene foam material is very common but this is not degradable so we, we can we can we can use some of the bio foam materials from the biodegradable product so uh, so that we can uh, take care of the recycling problems we can have different types of papers which are coming and also Uh, people are making uh, some of these uh, packaging material for the egg carton and all that from the uh, coconut fibers and natural latex kind of a composite formation and do that i think these are all goes as a cottage industry msme industry medium small can industry they can develop a lot of packaging products like that finally what we want to say that uh, we also look into the sustainability of the packaging so what we need to do we have to have our packaging material very effective efficient clean and cyclic okay it is effective means it has to be very useful so it should get a real value to the society it is efficient means it should be efficiently used throughout its product life cycle so that the product is properly used and we should not waste it okay we also should have a cyclic behavior of this packaging material we should not litter it it should be cycle continuously and uh, it should uh, minimize material degradation but it can be reused or refill or other packaging material uh, uh, can give the cyclic structure and obviously it should be clean hygienic and it should uh, give no risk uh, to the humans or the ecosystem for this purpose i like to thank you all for the presentation as i as i told you this is our foundation uh, which you, you can look at it uh, all the details about the foundation the kind of knowledge platform we have we can give you all this information of materials behavior information possibilities and if you want to come forward with a different packaging development how do we can use it uh, you can contact us or look at it through our website www.f-ips.org thank you very much for your attention any question any of the interest and you have will be very happy to answer all, all your inquiries thank you. <clears throat> thank you professor gosh i think very elaborate session on packaging material for the food packaging i think you have covered the conventional material the new material the technology and as well as also the advanced polymeric material which are going to the food packaging application uh, thank you so much for a very elaborate and very extensive uh, presentation now i'll move on to the next session uh, it is importance of packaging for pharmaceutical for exports and we have our speaker from the foundation mr rahul bhargav Uh, who is the chief consultant for the packaging innovation a very qualified packaging technologist with over 32 years chronical success and significant contribution in the r&d of the pharmaceutical packaging in a various industries works on pharma and vexi and currently he has ventured into a packaging consultancy in technical services for the end to end pack design cost 
productivity improvement and setting a unit of a biodegradable chemical coating material. Rahul, with his rich experience on the pharma industry for the last three decades, I think Rahul can really show us about what are the important uh, aspects of packaging when the MSM segment is really looking for the export of pharma as our chief guest was talking. Pharma is one of the, our uh, area, not the big industry, maybe the small pharma industry, as chief guest has mentioned, what are the key area or the thrust areas Pharma could be taken one of the first areas. So Rahul can definitely uh, touch upon that. Uh, I would request uh, over to Rahul Bhargav to speak on this subject, packaging of pharmaceuticals. Over to Rahul. Good afternoon, friends. Thank you, Professor Sa, for giving me this opportunity to talk on uh, packaging for pharmaceutical products. Although uh, the slides will cover uh, in general for uh, pharmaceutical products but the same thing is applicable for all products you know whatever the trends are there in packaging or the cost improvement thing or the or when we talk about uh, innovative packaging same concepts are applicable for the entire uh, for all the sectors uh, but here i'm going to talk more about uh, the pharmaceutical where uh, i'll cover uh, something uh, what the development cycle is like, how do you go about uh, developing packaging for a pharmaceutical product. So I'm going to emphasize on that. I'm going to emphasize on the labeling part, the regulations and other things which are so critical for pharma products. So uh, Jitin, can you please uh, put on the slides? Yeah, so the topic will be packaging technologies for pharmaceutical products. And before we go into it, there's a slide on uh, uh, the activities that FIPS does for innovative packaging. Jitin, can you just put it on? Yeah. Jitin, just slide share. Do it yourself. No, I think, Jitin, uh, you can continue. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rahul, you can go on. Yeah, yeah. So, fine. Uh, these are the topics that I'm going to discuss today. Uh, basically, one slide on what packaging is. Although, over the last two hours, we have been talking about packaging. I'm sure the uh, audience must have understood what the packaging is and why it is important and what, it, uh, what are the functions. I'll go through the development cycle, which is very critical. I, we can discuss here in detail how the, the pharmaceutical product, how it is uh, taken up for development and how the packaging is done and how the collaboration is done within R&D for developing a product. Uh, then we will also cover packaging for pharma products, trends in packaging, cost improvements. These are some of the things which I'll uh, focus on. Uh, uh, here in the packaging, the function as uh, we have uh, understood, it's all, uh, it has to protect, it has to be attractive, it has to take care to ensure that uh, from the time it is produced on shop floor till the time it reaches the end consumer, it reaches safely. So that's the key function. And uh, apart from that, it has to give the required shelf life, it has to be attractive, it has to have uh, various features which can uh, be convenient for the end users. So that's the function of packaging. And uh, uh, we, we have three tiers of packaging. What we call is a primary packaging. There is a secondary and a tertiary one. Primary is the one which is in direct contact with the product. So whenever your product, whether it is a pharma product or a food or cosmetics, uh, the product, whenever it is in contact uh, with the packaging, that's the primary packaging. So there it is very critical that uh, the, uh, the packaging that we select does not interact with the product and there is no migration of product into the packaging or from packaging into the product. So the selection of packaging is very critical because that's where the shelf life of the product is. While uh, uh, we may talk about uh, for food, uh, six to nine months of shelf life or in some cases even uh, more than nine months, uh, in case of pharmaceutical, we always talk about uh, shelf life of two years or five years in some cases. So we have to 
select the right packaging material which gives this uh, uh, shelf life to the product then there is a secondary uh, packaging which is basically meant to hold the primary pack it is uh, to have some kind of features you know, on the pack for the convenience the uh, to how the consumers will use it it gives the information about the product all the regulatory requirements the labeling text and design aesthetics all those are covered in the secondary packaging along with the shelf appeal and how to make it as attractive as possible so that's the secondary pack and the ter tertiary is what we call the transportation pack so uh, all three put together and all three are very critical it's not that primary it's in direct contact and it has to give the shelf life uh, to the product but uh, uh, the secondary packaging which gives uh, you know the uh, it talks about the shelf appeal and uh, convenience factor and the regulatory aspects those are very critical and so is the tertiary packaging because ultimately whatever we produce it has to cover a lot of uh, you know uh, journey till it reaches the end consumer and it has to reach safely there should not be any breakages or damages to the product and as we discussed uh, the commonly used materials are paper plastic glass aluminium and a lot of ancillary items are there which are used in making a packaging for any given product and so is it the uh, fact for pharma also next slide please yeah so for any packaging as i said in the beginning also whether pharma food or uh, cosmetics or any aspect Uh, what a perfect pack should be what are the se selection criteria so here we look at is a protection of product whether it's a strength or the barrier properties we look at the machinability because uh, we have to whatever packaging material we select or opt for our product it has to run smoothly on the machine so that's uh, very critical that we select the, the materials uh, which can run smoothly on machines at required speed giving the productivity and uh, gives the quality levels that are required the pack should be very compact i mean uh, as you all know the uh, shelf space is uh, very it's sold at a very premium i mean we can't have a bulky pack and uh, make sure that uh, uh, to make sure that our packs are visible on the shelf we have to make it as compact as uh, possible and uh, as visible as possible it is not that visibility will be increased through bulkiness because bulkiness as we have seen in pharmaceutical or when you visit uh, uh, the pharmacy or the chemist shop you will always find that he has thrown away the carton and other things he wraps the uh, strips and uh, pills into you know through a rubber band and keeps in a box you know so we have to make sure that our packs are not discarded and we have a compact pack it has to be cost effective aesthetics and shelf appeal also matter whether it is pharma or uh, i know it matters uh, a lot for uh, say cosmetics or food items but even in pharma or for uh, over the counter products you know otc products that we call which can be readily purchased uh, without prescription even there uh, uh, the aesthetics and shelf appeal matters and moreover uh, if we have uh, so many strengths and uh, dosage forms we have to make sure that uh, we don't mix up so there the brand and the printing the font the calligraphy all those things matter so the aesthetics and shelf appeal is also applicable for pharmaceutical then we have the recyclability whatever materials we select we have to make sure that they are recyclable so these this basically is a uh, uh, you know uh, whenever we start selecting a packaging we have to see these six seven things are taken into account while we start development for it now a journey for a product uh, launch this is very critical i think so we'll discuss it extensively here although it's a single slide but uh, it gives a wide variety of things it covers many things uh, jitin next one yeah Uh, so here it's a typical packaging development time schedule as well as the cycle so we have four phases as we can uh, see over here the phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 and uh, phase 1 is whenever the project is initiated suppose the marketing or the business team has uh, uh, identified that this is the product uh, that uh, r&d research and development team has to 
start working on so while the formulation team works on the formulation part the packaging also starts immediately we have to do the literature search or the market search on the uh, product and packaging we have to study what are the characteristics of the product what whether it is hygroscopic what kind of protection levels are required then we look at the innovator pack i mean uh, in pharmaceutical we call uh, the originator whoever has invented the product like in india most of us are all uh, generic uh, players you know we copy the products which are already available in world market and launch it in india so innovator products are which are already studied extensively and uh, are available globally over last uh, say 5 10 or 20 years so th- that's a innovator product so they have a lot of uh, uh i would say data on the product and uh, so that's one of the aspect that we study when we start development activities here in india that we look at the innovator pack that what kind of packaging uh, the uh, the originator uh, has for the product how they are putting it in, into different markets and uh, then we prepare the primary packaging materials accordingly that uh, while uh, we look at uh, the primary uh, the innovator pack it is not necessary that uh, our packaging will be identical to that of innovator like uh, as i was uh, you know as we have in like in uh, innovator pack uh, innovator product they may, see, may have patented uh, their product and several other formulations uh they may have six different i am just giving an arbitrary figure they may have five six uh, different formulation which they patent at the time of development and they launch one out of them and uh, and protect uh, remaining five formulations through the patent now if a generic company has to launch a product they have to de- design something different a seventh uh, type of formulation and while doing so Uh, it is not necessary that formulation will be very stable i mean uh, like we may have 2 uh, years or 4 years of shelf life but uh, since the many of the things are covered through the patent uh, uh, when we are developing a non patenting a uh, non patentable material or the product then it's not necessary that it will be as stable as uh, what is already there in the market so to take care of that product that it is not robust product it is not very stable we have to have a good quality of packaging improved barrier so that it gives the required shelf life to the product so here the preparation of primary packaging material innovator pack analysis the literature search with that we do looking at the product what kind of characteristics it has what kind of protection levels are required the packaging Uh, is uh, thought of we have two three different options that uh, can uh, give the protection to the product and uh, we select these uh, two or three different options of packaging and uh, start the stability studies um, for any given product to see you know we have to see that uh, the shelf life is uh, we we start with a particular shelf life that fine we want 18 month shelf life or a two year shelf life or something and uh, we initiate the stability studies and uh, uh, we do the accelerated studies at uh, elevated temperatures and humidity to understand that how the product is behaving in the packed uh, conditions and um, if the pro- if the if the results are matching the requirements there are no there is no degradation there is no uh, you know degradation of product or uh, there are some impurities and other things which don't take place then we select the packaging out of it as i said that we may have two or three different types of packaging now these two three packagings are selected based on the type of markets that we are going to enter now for export market or for domestic market like in india you may generally it is all a blister or a strip pack that a solid product is sold or a bottle pack which is there but globally we have to understand now if it is meant for europe or if it is meant for asia pacific or cis countries or africa market then uh, it's a uh, unit dose blisters which are more popular over there whereas if it is for uh, uh, usa there the concept of uh, dispensing is through the uh, pharmacy where it's a bottle pack so uh, depending on the markets where you want to enter whether it is a us market europe or any of the global markets that we are talking 
or uh, the domestic market we look at the market and uh, decide the packaging where uh, how we have to pack the product and while uh, looking at the pack we also have to look at the facilities that we have facility by facility i mean the packaging facilities whether we have those kind of machines whether we have to start the uh, uh, you know uh, procurement of those machines or we need to develop some uh, machine change parts for them so that we have a smooth run of those products so as i was saying that depending on the markets we uh, we want to uh, put our product and the type of packaging that we are opting for depending on the markets uh, where we want to put the product we decide the packaging facility and we say start uh, creating uh, the packaging facility once we have some solid leads on the stability data because we can't invest uh, on machines and other things unless there is some positive stability data so that's very critical so as we come closer to the having a good stability data we start working on the facility and start creating a facility so the work on uh, having the machine or machine parts gets initiated uh, you know within one or two months of uh, the stability data and uh, if we have some positive uh, data we initiate the procurement for the machine because that may also take uh, uh, two to three months or maybe four months uh, for installation qualification and all so once this is done then we start the activities for preparation of uh, specifications test methods now depending on the materials uh, we have to ensure that specifications are created as per the country requirement so whichever country we are doing we have to make sure that uh, uh, we have the certificates uh, meeting those uh, uh, the country's requirement suppose uh, for us it is there they they call up you know they they need a drug master file for the packaging materials the primary packaging material so we have to make sure that the materials that we use for stability and what we planned and whatever we use for stability the same thing gets extended for the commercial launch also so whenever we select the packaging material for stability we all as i said in the beginning about the markets for that we are going to put our product we have to look at the uh, availability of uh, drug master file for the uh, packaging materials we have to source the material from uh, uh, the manufacturers who have the drug master file we have to uh, similarly for european countries they have to have the ec certification for the material the food safety certificates uh, for the material similarly for the indian Uh, requirements we test the material as per ip uh, and uh, ensure that uh, the products the packaging is meeting the requirements as laid down in indian pharmacopeia and uh, while we select the material we create the test procedures and uh, specifications then we move on to development of uh, printed components because uh, here as i said earlier Uh, printing and labeling is very critical for any pharma product because any minor change also or minor error it calls for uh, you know we have to recall the product from marketplace i mean uh, globally also almost 65 to 70% of uh, recalls in marketplaces are due to labeling error so labeling and printing are very critical for any packet pharma packaging so here we start working on uh, the printed components we liaise with the formulation uh, development the legal team the reg- regulatory team and uh, prepare the text matter what is required we look at uh, uh, the regulations of each of the country and uh, then prepare the artworks the designs and other things are prepared meeting the market requirements and the regulatory requirements we do the proof approval line trials and uh, once these machines are procured we do the iq pq we what we call is installation performance qualification these are very critical that uh, whatever when the machines are uh, set up they consistently produce the product accordingly i mean there should not be any failure in the uh, packaging that we do so that's why the machine qualifications and inst- installation are very critical all everything is documented and then only we proceed so we do the line trials and then uh, once we are satisfied with it 
then uh, we pro- go ahead with the product launch and after the launch we also look at the pack performance how it is doing in the marketplace whether it meets all our requirements and in case uh, any improvement needs to be done it's done after the launch of the product that is option is also there so these this is basically a general uh, cycle which is maintained for any pharmaceutical product during the development so these four uh, phases are very critical as we develop the packaging for any formulation next one please yeah the whole i think you can wrap up the thing now yeah i'll just uh, qu- quickly do it yeah. so the product characteristics as i said uh, and the sensitivity of the product is very critical the agroscopicity the physical degradation chemical degradation and mechanical properties many times you have products which are very fragile so we have to select the packaging material which don't uh, you know damage the product like we have dispersible tablets which are uh, which uh, you know which are very fragile and uh, tend to break so we have to design the packaging uh, not only the machinability of it even the materials we design uh, materials which can be peelable rather than the push through because while pushing the product from the other side in a blister the tablet may break so those are the things uh, that we look at or many times they are light sensitive so we have to protect against light by using uh, different materials which can give the light protection or many products they have a tendency to release gas so we have to make sure that their processing is all okay so that uh, during uh, uh, once the product is packed the um, uh, there the, is the possibility of ballooning and other things so those have to be understood at the time of processing of uh, product and its packaging next slide please next one jitin yeah so the selection of packaging material yeah this one so the moisture uh, the light barrier requirement gas and chemical properties they all four things are looked at while selecting the packaging material next one so uh, the critical parameters as i explained they are the uh, for the for the chemicals for the components of uh, packaging materials any release which is there that we have to look at look at adsorption and absorption of uh, pharmaceutical component by packaging materials as i said there should not be any uh, interaction of packaging material with the uh, product and any chemical uh, reaction should not be taking place between the pharmaceutical product and the packaging so those are some of the things uh, that we look at while uh, designing the packaging for a pharma product next one next slide please yeah this one is just i will talk, you know the trends in pa- pack design uh, one of the thing is the dose compliance so here we look at uh, what the packs that we design they are as per the dose suppose it's a 5 day dose or a 7 7 day dose or a 14 days so we design the packaging as per the uh, pra- dose and make sure that uh, we give some uh, convenience factor to the patient you know the patient uh, will understand how and when to take the dose the the dispensing mechanism mechanism should be very easy and the closing should be easier i mean it should not be uh, too cumbersome like we many times see that uh, you know people struggle to open the pack or close the pack so we have to give a very uh, easy to dispense uh, mechanism it should be techno centric it a uh, child resistant pack wherever it is required like for exports packaging some of the countries they have specified that you need to have a child resistant pack so we need to develop a pack and qualify the pack uh, through the laboratories and make sure that we have a certification that certifies that the pack is child resistant because if you don't do it then you are penalized and you may be barred from marketing the product so we whenever a, a formulation is there you need to have a child resistant pack qualify the product and pack accordingly with the Uh, certificate from a independent lab uh, recognized by the FDA and make sure that our packs are meeting those requirement we discussed about small and sleek pack uh, because of the shelf space and other things we need to have uh, and naturally once we use a small and sleek pack it is uh, uh, more sustainable it is uh, you know we use less of packaging materials so that's another uh, thing that needs to be considered and uh, 
some uh, we also talk about anti counterfeiting features which are required for brand protection so that's another area that can be looked at uh, while designing the packaging that we either have uh, the feature built in through the technology or we have some uh, anti counterfeiting feature which will ensure that our brands are protected in marketplace and the pack ha ultimately has to be consumer friendly so some of the packs are there in the next slide we can just jethen next one yes these are some of the things which are child resistant and consumer packs you know where uh, it's a convenience uh, of the consumer which is looked at we have the uh, uh, child resistant feature which are built into it uh, we have to follow the instructions then only we can do it it can be a booklet label where we, you need to have a pack insert which is a mandatory requirement so many times uh, you have a, a medical pack insert and uh, one is uh, for the patient also there is a insert which is required so some of the things can be made part of uh, the label itself so a booklet label is uh, is a thing which ke, is uh, can be considered next one please yeah these are uh, airless pumps so here uh, uh, using these airless pumps we can ensure that there is no air or another thing while we uh, take out the product so it enhances the product shelf life we have the desiccant built in cap where the desiccant is part of the container which will ensure that it will keep on absorbing the uh, you know unwanted uh, moisture which is there while we open and close the pack or there can be a hanger label for infusion bottles previously we used to have a plastic uh, uh, hanger which was always given along with the infusion bottle now we have the label which uh, has the hanger inbuilt into the label itself so there is no additional step of uh, putting the plastic hanger along with the pack so it improves your productivity and it uh, you know reduces the cost also so these are some of the trends that can be considered next slide please yeah so some of the cost improvement things i mean uh, this is just a single slide and probably my last slide which uh, talks about the cost improvement areas that can be considered uh, not only i mean these six seven le levers that i have mentioned these are applicable not just for pharma it's there for all the uh, sectors while uh, we can look at eliminating some of the extra packaging so we can look at it some of the processes as we discussed about the hanger label that's a elimination of some process so while you do it you also save the cost you is improve your speeds and you enhance your productivity which are so critical in these times optimizing the packaging configuration we have to look at uh, optimizing the packaging the specification we look at uh, substitution we look at uh, some alternate packaging materials which can give the required uh, you know protection to the product and uh, it can be substituted at a lower cost we reduce the grammages whether it is aluminium foil or pvc or uh, the polythene or uh, maybe even the paper and paper boards so you can always look at reducing the grammages to cut down the cost we look at uh, optimizing vendor network indigenize the materials uh, i mean i remember uh, maybe 20 year 15 years back a lot of materials were being imported because we had to export our product to uh, developed markets but over the years we worked on indigenizing all the packaging materials which are now uh, you know everything is now produced locally except one or two items rest all items are now locally produced so that's a step that uh, packaging industry has worked on over last 10 15 years and make to sure that uh, uh, we indigenize the material we reduce the variety i mean as you reduce the variety you also consolidate and you that brings about uh, cost improvement so uh, next one please jethan next one next slide i think so that's it so okay. that's uh, thank you from my side okay uh, if you have any questions we can always take in to, to thank you thank you uh, rahul bhargav i think it was a amazing presentation on the packaging of pharmaceutical and i'm sure the participants will now understand that how complicated and how complicated process 
uh, best example could be the uh, vaccine which we are all have been waiting for the last two years now the covid shield or covaxin has come across the world this research was going on how far the vaccine should come and as rahul has given a one slide as mentioned typical packaging development time schedule and i'm sure on this uh, uh, on this process the day the vaccine um, uh, the formulation the research was started the packaging work was simultaneously going on and today we find on the market just a um, while has come a glass vial but that was started almost two years back along with the formulation was started so even this pharma packaging is a very complicated and once he has mentioned especially for the export of pharma is not so simple because you have a lot of compliance i think compliance becomes very important because this is a uh, this is a, a product where it is a uh, you have to plan in advance and you have to go in a process and which is a restricted you know we unless a food product pharma is a different you have to really a lot of compliance is required and uh, he has also mentioned that trends he has mentioned the critical factors what is very much important about the barrier for the packaging development thank you so much rahul i think it was a eye opening for most of the participants how really uh, for a pharma packaging development what are the steps to be followed and it's not so easy it's not a simple process it's more complicated and complex with that how really and ultimately a product is launched to the market thank you so much we just move on our last presentation is a very interesting presentation is a package design i think our chief guest has already mentioned that um, uh, one of the key area about the package design and we have with us one very experienced person from our foundation mr deepak manchanda who is a chief consultant of our foundation as a packaging design who has spent last 40 years in this packaging design started his journey from metal box and then he was heading the many industries start from pharma cosmetics um dabur he was the head of packaging dabur and bexi and oriflame and of course he has been consultant to many many industry and presently he is with us uh, as a packaging design that is his forte so i'll request uh, mr manchanda to take this session on a role of package design for handicraft for export market over to mr manchanda thank you dr sir <coughs> so uh, thank you and i am sceme for this platform and uh, thank you to the chief guest and guest of honor who spoke so many inspiring words about uh, packaging and also the our listeners i think who this is the last session and it's been a long afternoon so we are already beyond time so thank you for staying on to listen to this uh, it's uh, i Uh, can we see the next slide please um, yeah gitin yeah gitin you can share yeah, yeah. so uh, i am here to speak about the role of packaging package design of handicrafts and other goods for export markets so uh, next slide please i'll start by saying recently uh, my wife went to buy Uh, these ceramic bowls from the market from a fashionable shop the each bowl here is 150 rupees each next slide this is how these bowls were delivered or handed over can you go back to that slide please now this uh, in this condition to the people who talk about sustainable packaging this might be a, a good idea but it does very little about to enhance the scope of the product so the next slide these are examples of how packaging could actually enhance the status of the product and this is these are examples of better ways it could be done and there are reasons why this needs to be done next slide because design is all around us design is a way of thinking design makes a difference but design is not rocket science but if it is done well if design is done well it can launch your product in the next slide package design appeals to us in many ways in, in all around us we have a design environment and package design appeals to us and makes a difference in what we choose to use or not to use next and 
package design is not constant. If you see the design trends change with time, but they change not because of time, but they change also because of the, the improvements in materials and technology that happens. And therefore, methods of printing change, methods of manufacturing change, and the uh, package design change according to the times we live in, according to our choices and preferences at the time. So I'm going to, in the next slide, uh, something's gone wrong here. Can you, uh, this slide is not moving. Next, next. No, the next slide. Next slide. Next. 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 Okay, I think we can see basically in this slide, I'm talking about the uh, the trends can go back. No, when, when the customer encounters a package, can you go back, please? Go back to the previous slide. Previous slide. Yeah. There, there is a moment of truth when the customer sees the pack and there are some elements on the pack which creates that experience of good design. That is what we are going to talk about in the next few slides. What are the, co the key keys to that experience which makes or makes a good design good compared to a bad design? So um, next slide. Obviously the first part of that good design is the brand, the brand itself. You see, we will uh, come in contact with different product brands and some of them become a part of our life, become part of our family. We grow up with brands. And when we see such brands anywhere in the world or we come across old brands, we feel that we are meeting an old friend. So brand logos and packaging are, they relate together like one family. So this is one very important aspect of a, of a package, the brand itself. Next slide. The brand has to be packaged into the pack, pack because the, uh, relation, there is a relationship between the packaging and its communication. Whatever is on the pack, has to be also relatable or you should be able to see the same kind of colors and trends on the communications that go around it. Next slide. The, the packaging the, the brand into the pack means the borderland where packaging design meets advertising. The uh, advertising is what brings the previous slide, please go back. Advertising is what brings the product consumer to the package and the, uh, there has to be that relationship between the two. Next slide. A very important aspect of a, of a package is the credible backstory for the brand. The brand must have some story that it is selling to the consumers. These days we, are, we talk a lot about sustainability, for example. So uh, the sustainability sto story or uh, helping village communities or uh, uh, working for Khadi. These are all stories which help to create the image of the brand and how it is empathic, uh, helping society. Next slide. The other aspect of, uh, of any uh, good package is that it must be an object of desire. We are talking of everyday objects, which are objects of need, but actually a well-designed project uh, product must be an object of desire. It must lift the marketing brief from being just about creating an object of need to become an object of desire, something that you actually love. Next. The third aspect after branding and the uh, object of desire is the... Uh, disruption. If every package looks similar or has does the same thing and it's not different, then it doesn't really create that non-conformist or uh, visibility in the shelf. For example, here is this jam label, which is very ordinary compared to the others, which are more pictorial. 
but in a way that this particular jam label has been so successful because of its non non conformist and disruptive method of packaging next disruption another example is when we are using a package and putting a communication on it which actually makes you look twice so here is another example of disruption next previous slide another aspect of uh, good packaging next next slide is customer experience uh, these days uh, the customer experience is a complete experience it is it extends from the uh, the the advertising to the brand to the package how you unbox the product and how in what environment if you go to buy it in the retail shop in what environment did you find it and uh, what was the experience if you ordered it online what was the experience of re receiving it so the whole customer experience is called delight and it's a part of the packaging next for example this particular showroom was designed around the experience of catch salt the whole idea was to uh, create an environment of catch salt where the customer walks in and experiences the brand in many different ways next slide uh, another aspect of course is the statutory aspect and how the compliances have been done so uh, the uh, there are various compliances which and uh, regulatory aspects which have to be labeled on to the pack and uh, uh, in the case of uh, durable goods for example it may be bis or isi or it may be in the case of food products it may be fssci or the uh, the these kind of marks plus there are these uh, sustainability marks which are now gaining uh, preferences and many customers actually look for sustainability marks or uh, no cruelty to animals those kind of marks are also there if you see next to the iso there is also a brand uh, there is a lota mark which is supposed to be the india design mark which i will talk about a little later next uh, here again the slide has gone wrong but uh, be indian and buy indian this is the next part of it that uh, the appeal to nationalism appeal to uh, atmanirbharta uh, vocal for uh, local that kind of thing so this being indian and buying indian swadeshi is definitely an element of design which can be created next so uh, one important aspect of packaging is the finish the finish of the package winning organizations use high grade packaging finish to produce champion products what is this actually is the phenomena of sensation transference you may look at a product and if you see a poor quality finish then you somehow uh, the package is poorly finished and you transfer that feeling to what is inside the poor product poor packaging means poor product this is sensation transference so it's very important to design a product with the right kind of finish next so uh, we uh, we have actually produced a white paper as fips and in that uh, there is this very interesting quote from professor pradyumna vyas he was the former direct director of nid and he says we need to put india in indian products with the help of smart design so just as we were just talking about swadeshi so the uh, if particularly we are working talking about handicrafts from india the idea the story of india somehow needs to be also on the design of the pack this is designed for global competitiveness with the story of india next slide so uh, his observation was that according to a study done some time ago it was observed that products invest just 5% of their development cost towards design will actually succeed in leveraging an increase of 70% more in sales this is a significant fact which i believe is not well appreciated by our entrepreneurs and businesses so if you just invest 5% more of your costs you can gain you can leverage your sales 
and the tremendous potential of being able to ch channel income benefits direct from the rich to the poorest needy in our society. It just needs our traditional craft and village produce to be designed and presented in a way that appeals to premium products. To do it successfully, however, each product needs to be carefully detailed with sensitivity and a credible backstory that will attract the upscale clientele. So traditional crafts to be presented in a modern contemporary way to appeal to modern clientele. So uh, more this uh, next slide, please. This uh, article is actually available in our white paper produced by FIPS. Uh, I was talking of that Lota design that is actually the India design mark. And in order to promote the idea of uh, uh, appreciation of good design from India, this this mark has been uh, put uh, has been designed so that uh, products which meet the criteria can actually feature it on their package. And we use we need to elucidate our design strengths and weaknesses, and learn to work together to capitalize these opportunities. You will be able to read more about it in the next slide. Can we put the next slide, please? This this is the complete white paper which I urge you to download from our website www.fips.org. Please download it and you will find the complete article on design for global competitiveness. Plus you'll find 15 other articles from uh, all the people associated with FIPS and you will find uh, uh, a lot of good ideas about materials, packaging and training there. Next. Thank you. Um, yeah, that is all I have yeah. to say. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Manchanda. I think uh, Deepak Manchanda has spoken about what are the key elements of a package design. And when you really think about whether it's a domestic market or an export market, how really package design and branding are interrelated or rather interlinked. And ultimately, it goes to the advertising. And all put together, it leads to a marketing. That's where the package design, branding, and advertising are interlinked each other to increase your sales value to the proper marketing. And he has also covered about certain of the disruption package design, which is uh, many times we find in the roadside, in the billboard, sometimes uh, intentionally some uh, word comes in the wrong words and which it actually intentionally is done so that any um, uh, road person going by car, he has a uh, he has an attention to that. And that's also one kind of marketing piece that starts a part of the design, which is called a disruption design. Yet given some of the example, and most important was the be Indian and buy Indian. I think that's the Shadesh or Atman Yebar Bharat. And this is coming a tagline for the next generation, whatever we are talking for our design. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Manchanda. I think you have given a nice presentation of the package design or the package design, how real is important for our export market. Uh, uh, thank you so much. I think uh, before I close it, uh, I have seen the chat box. Uh, there is a one or two comments has come, but they have given only thank you so much for great initiative. Mr. Gavin Viker has written, but there is a question has come from Madhavi D. She has written, uh, thank you, sir, for detailed information. I would like to know whether training will be given for manufacturing or biodegradable packaging material, innovative packaging training module, etc. Yes, Madhavi, and for all the participants, for your knowledge, uh, the FIPS, we have been now taking initiative to have a, a collaborative training module with the Delhi University, the Bhaskaraja College we are talking. We are also in touch with uh, Mahatma Gandhi University in Kerala. And today I had a talk with the Vice Chancellor with the Northeast uh, USTN, the University of Science and Technology with Meghalaya. So all the three universities are going to take a different kinds of design and training module so, and biodegradable packaging, what you're talking, that will also be covered. So what I would suggest, um, you can always uh, in touch with uh, FIPS through our website. You can visit our website, www.f-ips.org. And there you find the contact address and our email, and you can just write to us and you'll get, immediately you'll get the reply and we'll connect you where to join and which training module you can join. So with this, thank you so much. I think thank you for your uh, patience. It's almost uh, six o'clock. We have taken over time, a long afternoon, but I believe 
all the four presentation was very informative and the, such an experienced uh, speaker they have covered the four important subject now i'll request uh, mr shailendra singh our chief consultant of sustainability mm -hmm. to give the summing up the entire webinar over to mr shailendra yeah thank you dr saha in the interest of time and uh, first of all you know a lot of uh, uh, warm appreciation for everybody to stay uh, to together for so long uh, in particular uh, dr venkateshwaralu thank you and i hope that uh, you know we have been able to touch uh, many aspects of how packaging can add value in the msme sector we spoke about innovations in packaging material pharmaceutical segment design uh, and how that could be relevant so i'm quite sure sir that we may have lived up uh, to your Uh, expectations and i'd like to uh, say that this is a a very very important subject uh, critically in terms of adding value and not only adding value to your products uh, but particularly in the msme context also creating new opportunities and and employment for so many people so with that uh, i'd like to uh, close this uh, with a very very brief summing uh, summing up and thank you so much for your attention and we look forward uh, to uh, meeting you again uh, in some in more webinars that we'll be planning over the coming months and years thank you very much have thank a great you. evening ladies and gentlemen yeah thank you so much thank you to all thank you